minutes to start. And the three minutes to start. Means the three minutes point. Ready for the heat. No more setting is allowed. Hold up your position. Big step back for Mario. Good morning and welcome to Portugal. It's live coverage of the Caparica Surf Fest 2023. A sunny Saturday morning on the Costa Caparica at Praia Paraiso. And it's finals day. Good morning, welcome everybody. Happy Easter, if that's your thing. I'm Paul Evans, I got Monday, I got Alves. How are we feeling today, gents? Ah, absolutely ecstatic, Paul. It's the finals day. We've spent a lot of the week watching incredible surfing and it's about to come down to just six heats of the, the last day. Chico, you like what you've seen so far this morning? The sunshine, the waves, the crowd filling in, fires, yeah. that tension in the air. I'm excited. The the tide is getting lower. I've seen a couple of good ones. A uh, when a little bit excited. You're just uh, building up, though. You don't want to peak too early in the semis. Right? <laughs> exactly. But I think um, it's looking really good. I think we're going to see some airs, some big turns, and I can't wait to watch it. Okay, well, let's take a look at our bracket and see who's left, basically, in the draw. We've got four surfers on either side, the semis, and then the finals to come. First up, let's check out the women's bracket. This is what it looks like. A lot of talent there. Yeah, obviously, we've come this far. The form servers have sort of filtered through to the, um, yeah, the, the, the last two left remaining. Yeah, Lopez Baselco, the classic Portuguese matchup. They've been both been on fire. And then Leander Hopkins, the current um, qualifying series European champion up against the veteran Paulina Doe. So, yeah, there's lots of narratives, lots of great surfing. Uh, the form surfers, probably the four of the whole event, and uh, ready to battle it out. Guys, you're just, again, have you got a winner from those four? I know we asked last night, but maybe you thought about it a little further. Uh, Veselka, I'm still sticking with. Uh, I'm going to stick with Veselka too. I think uh, hey. she's been really on form. Yeah, I feel like the winner might come from, from the other, other semi. I'm going to go with Hopkins, actually. Okay. Thanks, Paul. It's time, time will it's tell. It's a sport of opinions. Yeah. Check out the men's brackets and see where we are just for surf. So we're going to go down and hear the call right now, find exactly what our running order. With a tinge of sadness, I'll say, for the last time this week, let's go and hear from Hugo Pinero. Good morning, guys. It's on. It's finals day. We had a 9 a.m. call. What happened? What was the situation? Why did we put it on hold? Uh, good morning to all. So when we arrived in the morning, was waves, but the tide, so low tide is now at 10.30. And also we have a swell coming in this afternoon, so... We think that we start now in low tide, 10.30, so the tide now is coming up. Most chance to have more swell coming, more waves, more wood quality for the surfers. That's it. And we're going to have a very exciting day today, aren't we? Ah, for sure. Uh, we have like the decision like in the men's, of course. We still have uh, men's, the first round, the first hit of men's is very important. Uh, right now also we have the Portuguese in the war. Everybody in the beach are like... Uh, um, want them to, to win. So that's it. Yeah, it will be an um, amazing day. Well, there's only one that can go through, and we're going to check that out right now. Back to you guys. Thank you, Garnell. Thanks, Hugo. Let's check out our first semi final of the day as we wrap up the entire season today here at the Costa de Caparica. Mafalda Lopes kicker for Selco. We talked about the emerging, well, emerged generation of new talent from Portugal. These two at the very top. 
of that pack. Yeah, absolutely. They're the, yeah, the vanguard, obviously, um, Francisco, uh, Francisco Francisca has um, been the European, so the world junior champion. So she's like absolutely on fire this year. And Mafata Lopes has just been absolutely belting her backhand all throughout the event. These two, they're sparring partners, they're friends, and yeah, they're, they're the best of the next generation of Portuguese surfers. So it's super exciting. I think we're going to see a lot of these two battling it out uh, in the years to come, hopefully all the way on the CT. Tell us some more about Mafalda, Chico. We've seen from her, we've seen, yes, Mundy said some of the power surfing she's been. We've also, in the past, seen the progression of her going to the air over in the Azores. She's a really well-rounded surfer and quite an intense competitor as well. Yeah, she is. Uh, she loves to win. Uh, she's a really good competitor. So I think it's going to be a tough paddle, uh, tough um, battle for uh, Kika. I think Kika needs to really put some rhythm uh, early on because uh, my father is no joke. Uh, if she gets the opportunity, she will attack it and um, we will see that. So it's going to be a great matchup. I think we are on the semi, so um, we, we can tell it's uh, game time. There's no more uh, easy eat. It's semi-finals. Yeah, so absolutely. Game on. There's no more easy heat. It's down to the last four and Lopes and Veselko, the two form surfers of the event. Different styles. I've seen um, Mafalda sort of just go off and like two turn combos, like quite short, sharp, like big turns, uh, not, not length of ride so much. Veselko, although she has um, came in close with the odd one big turn combo, she has been like in more rhythm with the ocean. So, yeah, contrasting styles. Also, um, you know, obviously natural versus goofy. So, um, I'm looking forward to, uh, yeah, seeing what these two have got for us. Yeah, my father loves him, <laughs> Francisca, here with 25 minutes to go. It's going to be tight, and obviously with this swell, it's, it has decreased since yesterday, so it's, um, you know, you, you can't make mistakes. You've got to pick your waves. You're not going to have that many opportunities. Um, any type of wipeouts will will be punished. Um, yeah, it's 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 looking pungent. Low tide on the bank, Chico. We've discussed at some length your preference for the high, but what kind of waves are we are we looking for? The big right handers out the back. There's some of those shorter, more shapely lefts. What are you thinking? Well, I think it's going to be the the right handers out the back. I think um, uh, they're going to really. Uh, make sure they wait for the right one uh, to pull the trigger. Uh, I was out there having a look at the ocean, and when the set uh, comes, uh, the waves are looking really fun. So uh, I can't wait to see the first set roll in and to see them in action. Uh, there's only 24 minutes to go. But they are both really patient. Um, uh, I don't know if you're... you're uh, um, if you know, but uh, one was sitting more relaxed, the other one was just paddling around a bit. So Kika there sitting on her, her board, looking really uh, relaxed. And Mafalda a bit more um, anxious, I would say, because she was paddling, looking maybe. It's quite interesting without the priority as well here. Like, what do you do? Like, if it is a right hand, Mafalda seems to have grabbed the inside. It's pretty important to grab it inside. They're not, they're not battling over it, but it's quite a crucial decision early on, Paul. Should we take also. a look at our forecast and see what the swell's doing throughout the day. Still nice and clean out there, really crisp lines. That's been a feature all week. It's pretty solid waves through the middle part of the week. Final Saturday today. That's what we're looking at. Well, uh, in the morning we have uh, 0 0.7 and on the afternoon we're going to have 0 0.9. So, uh, as uh, Pinheiro said, there's a, a, a bit of a rise in the swell for the afternoon. So, we might see some bigger waves with the tide coming. Uh, and uh, hopefully, some consistent sets for our competitors for the semis and finals. So, um, great week we had of waves. Ah, uh, it's been non-stop. Yeah, slight little bump there in the period as well. Yeah, it's been, you know, I can't remember a forecast, you know, consistently been this good at a uh, qualifying series event in a long time. Started off just absolutely pumping. Some of those early, you, 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 you hark back to those like incredible tubes we were ridden. Looks like we might have the first wave of the day. Here goes Lopez on the inside. Wow. Nice first turn. What's she got here? Wow. Another hammer. 
Lopes again, oh. a third one. And just on a roll on this wave. Nice rhythm to it. Some good speed, maybe a slight insider, but maximizing the scoring potential. The squad looking on, they'll enjoy that. Yeah, so they should. I mean, we just talked about getting that inside and getting that first wave. And I'll tell you what, Mafalda has just got the initial wave, and she's absolutely smashed it. Four really clean turns. Soko looking to fire back straight away, though. Here goes Kicker. Good looking away from her with some speed as well. Off the bottom, bang into the lip, pushes hard. And that wave was running away and just caught the nose as she was coming out of that turn. So arriving quite late to the lip. What she will do is try and scramble out, just get priority again, but a bit of a mistake there for Kicker. Yeah, we just talked about how, how important it was getting that strong start and that wave just ran down the line. She wouldn't have known what Mafalda did, but she's still trying to get a good opening start and it was just too quick with this wave she go. Pretty impressive. Yeah, blows the fins there, winds up again, quick snap. I like this third one too. Uh, so I think it, this is going to be a good score for Mafalda to start this hit off maybe. Kika there feeling a bit of pressure because she might have uh, seen Mafalda's uh, wave as we see her at the back the looking. Spray, for sure. yeah. oh, she's probably felt it. it was just buckets of it. it was so much spray coming from her board, especially that first turn. It was, she just moved serious amounts of water. And um, that's what the judges love as well. So, yeah, that backhand of hers is lethal. And what a way to start a, a semi-final. Wow. That first turn was sick. Second one, a bit of a transition turn. And the, and the third one, sick wave from my father. I think this was probably one of the best waves she had. Yes. It was a soft wave. You compare that to Kicker's wave, which was sort of running away and draining. But she hit it so hard. She got another wave here. Look at this thing. This is live action. That will run away, but just having a swing as she makes her way back out. Beautiful on that drone shot as well. You can see where the spray landed from her turns. You can actually see where she did the turns as the wave was ending. Really, really cool vision from our drone pilots, bringing those incredible angles. But she's going to get a good number for opening ride. And just a small throw away as well, just for her last effort. So seven points in from Falda. Great way to start a semi. Yeah, flat seven off the bat, exactly what you want. Puts pressure on your opponent. Already 10 minutes gone. So, yeah, you probably couldn't ask for a better kind of way to get this final stay started. You know, look, just, you know, got rid of the nerves. Just from the very first bottom end turn, she was just in sync. So, yeah, incredible surfing. She probably, you know, you, you've had a lot of time to think about this set, <laughs> this heat. Finished yesterday, had all day, all afternoon yesterday. Last night, you know, you're just thinking about this this um, big matchup and what, and what could happen. And then straight away, she's put all that behind her and just smashed it. So yeah, great start from Mafalda Lopes. Yeah, I think, uh, as you said before, Ben, I think it's really important to have priority at the start of these seats. This is a man-on-man -man hit. There's big laws. And uh, at least uh, I would like to see maybe Kika being a, a bit more involved there with that position. Not saying uh, move them out of position, but just try to, to put a bit of, uh, of more pressure there for my father because she stood up on that wave just like, I'm surfing here alone today. Mm. The other side to that, though, we have seen some of those rights. People actually take them by paddling out and wide to take off. A lot of them hit the edge of the bank, don't they? They don't want to yeah. get too far behind. We have seen quite a bit of that with surfers basically caught inside and watching good set waves go past. We see that And a they're lot. too deep. Yeah, so I think that maybe that just influenced the positioning. It sometimes, you know, you find yourself in the right place and it looks like a great call, great planning. Here's a good looking entry from Mafalda Lopes who realizes that one's going to run away. So she more just pulls through the back. She holds onto the board, just punches through. And she'll look at these runners down on the edge of the bank, sitting a little wider. And if she gets a connection on one of these steep ones, I'll tell you what, it's going to be even more spray. But this one just a bit quick. She's been close. The last two, the, you know, she's probably just been 10 yards being off the right spot and uh, getting that open face. Had a crack, you know, no, nothing to lose. But, yeah, it was just too deep. Um, yeah, so that positioning on the bank, it's easy to say in terms of getting out there. Sometimes you just, um, you know, it, it just it comes to you. You get a bit lucky. And I felt it perhaps that first wave. But, um, but still... I think being showing intent and getting an inside at the start of the heat is is pretty important. It's up to surfers just do it differently. Obviously, your friend 
and ours, Gabriel Medina, he, he always wants that inside. But guys, like I remember, like Taj Burrow would just never, ever, you know, get involved in the hassle. It wasn't it wasn't his kind of style. He, he didn't enjoy it, didn't think it helped his surfing. So it kind of depends on the type of person and the type of surf you are in terms of tactics. Speaking of tactics, let's go in here from Goanna. She's in Camp Lopes. Yeah, guys, that's right, Rodrigo. So having one athlete in the water is pretty nerve wracking, right? Having two girls in the semifinals, how are you feeling? Um, actually, it's a really hard uh, one to, to do. It's always going to be a mixed feelings because there's always going to be one that loses and one that wins. And well, it's my goal is for them to be surfing really good and reaching both of them high scores. But they're already used to this. They're used to training together as well, right? It's kind of different, but yeah, they, they train together, so they're always trying to push up uh, one another. And yeah, well, that's the goal, just be better than the other one. And who do you think has the advantage here? At this moment is my father. She just started with a seven, uh, but Kik is dangerous too, so it's going to be a good matchup. We'll see. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, so handsome surf coach. Good interview from Joanna. And uh, these two are used to each other, he's saying. You know, they train together and they surf together, but it's a very different proposition doing it under pressure in semi-final of the QS, the last QS event of the year. So, yeah, I like that from Joe. As we see Kika there waiting uh, patiently for first major score, 16 minutes to go. And looks like there's some good lines approaching out the back. As you see, my father moved uh, a little bit to the middle of the beach and Kika stayed there on that main break. As we see Kika up riding. Here's Vaselko off the bottom. Nice open calf. And the wave just backs off. Essentially, as soon as she starts to do that turn, the wave disappeared. She won't add points. The pressure's building on her a bit now. She's got nothing on the board. Just used priorities. Lopez now going to head towards the top of the peak, Ben. Sure, they're so far apart. They're literally surfing totally different sections, different banks. Um, you know, the coach would have obviously both had their sort of game plan in terms of where they're going to sit. Uh, Francisco's gone way up to the north. But, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to say. It's just slow. It's so by not a lot of energy in the, in the ocean. There goes my father there. You're right, Paul. She has decided to get up near her opponent. Halfway stage. And, you know, look, there's a little... There's not a lot riding on this in terms of there's no um, ch um, challenger series rankings or European sort of championships, so it's literally about just trying to perform your best. But I, you know, if I was Mafalda, I'd kind of stick where she, wherever she got that first right hander. If that's where it broke, I'd, I'd be inclined to, to stay there. Challenger series for the women all wrapped up for Europe. All wrapped up. Who would just remind us who we're sending, Ben? Well, we're sending these two. Um, we're sending. They're Yol locked in. Yeah, Yolanda Hopkins. Locked in. Teresa Bombolo, uh, kick out. It's got one just by virtue of the um, ch uh, her um, world junior title. So it's yeah, Hopkins, um, Teresa Bombolo for his CT. Uh, these two, and Vienna. I think uh, Vahim Fierro as well. Through, so. Pauline Addo coming up in the second semi. She's looking pretty good. Yep, she's a, a lock as well. She'll be going to uh, Snapper Rocks the first event, the first Challenger Series event, May the, May the sixth, I think. Double sell up. So um, yeah. It's all all done and dusted in terms of women. The men's has still got some uh, a few permutations that we'll get to when they when they when they come in. Teva Bouchard, actually like a guy that needs to get through his heat to to um to needs to make the final. Yeah, needs to make the final. Needs to make one heat. So it's pretty cut and dry for him. Now that adds serious pressure. And you know already you think about getting to this stage of the um, the big event, the last event, the qualifying series. To have that on top of it. You know, that, that carrot, which is what they've all been sort of surfing for for the last sort of eight months, really. It's going to come down to a half hour heat um, in about an hour's time. Not much has happened in this one, really. About a seven from Falda Lopez. And other than that, it's not been filling. I think uh, we might need to check the questions from Twitter. I think it's time for that. We haven't checked today. Have you've, ever mate, got? Was, you had, you yes, have mate. changed, mate. You liked it to now. I thought you were off it. You've got to keep one. There's been money. There's been money quiz. There's uh, Twitter. There's, there's whatever. Well, you got to, well, it's just come in. It's the same one that was asked on, on Wednesday. You've got to keep one. Tiago Perez, um, Vasco Ribeiro, and uh, Frederica Moraes. 
Can I pick? Uh, <laughs> yeah, one. You can pick no, one, one thing from each. No. <laughs> no. You can, you can just keep one. As we go for a commercial break right now, and. Uh, <laughs> As you see, a good line approaching. Look at this thing. Priority is with Lopes. That's the bad news for Kicker. It will have to put itself in a position. <laughs> Lopez is going to go this for sure. Here she goes, up riding on the backhand. We'll pick it up from above. First turn, sharp. Get some speed. Deep bottom turn. Bang, wow. nice and vert. And then goes onto the rail for a quick check snap. Meanwhile, behind. Again, Veselka with a wave that runs too fast down the bank. And again, she won't add much to the score. She should get prior. Didn't seem to go that far. Be interested to see where Lopez is exactly. What are you thinking, Ben? Well, with that priority, like, obviously, Mafalda had priority. Veselka is sort of... But by paddling for that wave and making forcing the issue, she kind of was out of position for the, neck, with the wave behind it. I know it's easy to say, but I'd be more inclined to just to wait for that next set. Mafato's always going to take off. Um, and by virtual sort of hassling and paddling and forcing the issue, I think she got out of position for the set behind it. I mean, it's it's such tight margins at this level, but little things like that, that you know, in hindsight we can see it was a, you know maybe a, another mistake. Numbers in four eight three is decent. <clears throat> Most of that payoff for that one first turn was big. 483, it's a pretty decent backup number. She'll look for more as well. 11 on the clock. It's all gone swimmingly thus far for Mafalda Lopes, who's just had the rub of the green in terms of the wave she's chosen. She surfed them well. Let's have another look at this. Yeah, big snap there. Uh, kind of a transition turn, and this one a bit more vertical. And then she wrapped around it and um, wrapped back into the pocket and uh, gets a 483. So, um, not a huge score, but uh, for sure uh, a better backup than a, a 0.33. So um, Mafalda with a good eat strategy and putting a, a bit of pressure in Kika as we see Kika behind it. Uh, a bit, uh, as you said, Ben, out of position yeah, for that one. Yeah, she was just too deep because she paddled for the wave before. And it's rare that you can, you know, in any type of surfing situation where you paddle for a wave and, uh, you know, you... It, it, usually means you're out of position for the one behind it. Um, so potentially a yeah, small error. She's still got 10 minutes, she's got a bit of time. She needs one wave, she'll be right back in it. She's eyeing off this one here. Just hasn't been able to show the the incredible form she's shown all week. Some bigger waves approaching here. It looks like Mafalda might be on, on the end of this. Her positioning has just been superior. And here she goes again. Hard paddle and up Mafalda Lopez on a running wall or oh, pushes real hard on the first turn just loses the tail unable to capitalize much there but she's definitely found the better rhythm and that was the point we made earlier about being too deep and a lot of the sets you actually need to paddle out and wide to get them all right chance for kicker here what she got this one is going to be another quick wave let's see if she can match this for speed nice open in turn using the rail and then up pushing the board over the roof of the wave that's better from her yeah, she's back in it. I mean, she might kind of match that lower scoring wave of Mafalda's at the very least. So connected with two turns, that'll be dual confidence. And at least it gets back within striking distance. She needed to do that with nine minutes on the clock. She needed something relatively quickly and she's done it. And she surfed it well. Great uh, snap there and uh, a bit late to this last turn, but she managed well to actually get a bit vertical there. I think uh, this wave is going to help uh, Kika's cause for sure. Great carve and the ear a bit late, but she managed managed to actually put the board up there and make it. So um, great surfing by by Kika. Just got those waves that every wave she's had is those you mentioned it there, Paul. Just fast pace. So unlike Mafalda, has been able to like sort of get two or three turns in and just sort of have time to pick a spot. Vasilko's had to sort of race it. Great looking set here. This is crucial, really. Eight on the clock. Vasilko needs to get scores here. She really does. We're still waiting for our last number to come in, but it's not going to be enormous. And she needs to find an opportunity before this one just runs away from her. She's going to get a, a number in similar to the backup score of Lopes, which will need to leave in a six or a seven, something of that order. 
And she needs to find herself some opportunity. She doesn't have priority as well, but that's why she's sitting wide on the banks. A 4-4-3 coming in. She needs a 7-4 now. Well, there's seven and a half minutes on the clock, and that feels like a big number for her. It does in respect to the way this heat's gone, but in terms of what she's been, uh, the numbers she's been posting throughout the whole event. Those are different days, Ben. Yeah, I'm aware that mm. I'm aware that, that, that this the, is today. what happened in the past Stay is different from what happens today. Yeah. But just in terms of confidence and what she's been posting, like you know, she's totally capable of whacking like, a huge number if she just gets a similar wave to what Mafalda got that first wave she got. That's all she needs. If it's a big if, obviously. If. But um, yeah, she's capable of it. But um, yeah, you're right in terms of the way this heat's gone. Um, she seems a bit out of confidence, a bit out of rhythm. But that can change quickly in surfing. Chico, what do you do when nothing's coming your way? Every time you've got priority, you get a close out, and you turn around and you see your opponent get another score. How do you get out of that funk? Any tricks? Any tips? I don't know. Maybe just change the rhythm of, uh, of the of the heat. Try to change that mojo, because uh, it's all about energy, and uh, it feels like all the, the good stuffs are happening well, to my father on this one. Quite often when things happen in the surf, you just... Just to put, you do a little duck dive as you put, just put your head underwater. We're still trying to wash off everything that's happened lately. Does that work? Yeah. Yeah. Just wash off your bad juju. Ju what about putting your foot on the board and like sinking under the water, yeah. get your feet in the wax? Yeah. Sometimes that can help. Sometimes that helps. Maybe lie, lo loll off the rail and just kind of lie with your arms over the over the board sideways. Sometimes I just like just dive to the bottom of the ocean and sit like sort of and do like a 45 second like deep breathing underwater. Led Hamilton style. <laughs> what? Well, it what? works for me. Yeah, it gets, got me out of many a funk. <laughs> works for me. Under six on the clock. Let's check the recap. It's been pretty one-sided affair in our first semi-final for the women. Mafalda Lopez has looked really good from the beginning, and she hasn't taken a foot off the gas. No, this is the way that's won. Well, got her one foot in the final. Um, see how green that drone shot showed that wave, just tapering perfectly down the line. And, yeah, she connected with those first two turns. And unfortunately, Francisca, she'd never been able to just get ways that allow her to open up and show a style. It's another good one. So backed up at seven with this. Her backhand's been so good all week. And she's just played a really smart heat as well, this heat, Oshiko. That's been yeah. the difference. Yeah, good heat strategy. She started off with priority. She made sure she, made sure she wouldn't fell on anything. This was Kika's wife trying to come back on this one, not the ideal wave to come back on this seat, but um, yeah, my father um, had the best strategies. She started off with priority. She got the best wave of the eight so far on the first uh, 10 minutes, and then she backed it up. And we've seen the ocean is slow, so I think it's uh, the best competitor until then. Uh, so that's why Kika is needing a 7.4. So if uh, Kika really needs to come back on this one, we need a, a uh, two wave set or something like that so uh, both of them have um, opportunity and maybe Mafalda um, falling or not improving on that 4 a three because if she does it will be even harder for um, Kika to, to win the Any updates on the surf quiz overnight Ben? Surf quiz? Did any research? Bundy surf quiz. Searching some questions? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Been going through that, some of the um, yeah nitty gritty. We actually had a good chat about the um, surfers never to have won a heat on the CT. <laughs> we went through that. Yeah, yeah, that was that was one of the questions. Turns out that uh, my intel was correct. No need to Google that type of stuff when Monday's involved. I, I tell you what, I, I really like to see these two surfers make the grade, I think. We've seen Mafalda but what, what, you know, during the, the lockdown period, the COVID, we um, had some sort of CT sort of adjacent competitions and Mafalda did really well at Ribera de Ilash, I remember. She really showed what she's capable of. Selka obviously now as a world ju junior champion uh, has that uh, place on the Challenger Series. So I'm really looking forward to these two cutting it against the best in the world. We'll see where they're at. Here she goes though. So she's gone deep, I mean, further down the line, and she's paddling. She can't get it. So it sums up her, her heat, really, so far. Got to try and get something going here, does. 
Vassell Co. Here's a wave. She's on the inside. She's going. Great looking wall. Here's a big turn. And tried to release the tail. I feel like maybe that one's going to have to be a quick rebound to get down the line. We couldn't see the rest of the wave, but pushing really hard, pushing a little bit too hard. Yeah, she's under the pump. She needs, a, you know, that was a one turn wave. So she had to go for it. She did with the tail out, but just couldn't quite hang on. See, so she's getting, well, understandably now, she's getting quite desperate. She's two minutes on the clock, chasing a 7-4. She just wants waves to come through, basically. If waves come through, she'll keep trying to take off for something. She's chasing points, 7 for the requirement, two on the clock. Lopez will just be enjoying this. She hasn't. I've got a quick, got a quiz, quick question for, um, for Chico Alves. How many world titles combined? It's a bit of mass as well. Have Lane Beachley, Stephanie Gilmore, and Margot Oberg won? Combination. 24. <laughs> No, that's incorrect. I know. You, I'm didn't, kidding. you didn't think about it. I'm all. kidding. It was uh, 17 or 16, I, I, I think. No, that's incorrect. Lane, six. Se seven. Seven. Yep. Steph, eight. Eight. So there's 15. How many did Margot Oberg win? Yeah, that's the one. the nub of the question. <laughs> hey? One. Ah, she won four. Yeah, four, mate. 19 was the correct answer. I knew that. I said 24. Yeah, that was wrong as we, well. We you said lots of numbers that weren't no, right. No, no, uh, the first one I said 24. I know you did. Close. That was, that was five too many. Margot Oberg hasn't won nine world titles. <laughs> we know about that, I reckon. No, it wasn't even close. Actually, you let yourself down. You let the sport down. Under a minute to go, and it's been hard luck for Kika Vasilko, who's just had nothing go away in this one. It's one of those heats you get there. A tough semi-final, and her opponent, on the other hand, has had a couple of good opportunities and just really taken them. Mistake-free surfing, really, from Mafalda Lopes. And she's close to being our first finalist, but hang on, we've got a vigorous paddle here. As we see Vasalka trying to get up the point to get this wave, and Lopez just chasing her to say, yeah, you can take that wave if you want, I'm just gonna drop in on you if you do. Oh, the so. kicking, look at the, look at the wake. It's like, the, Pat kicking so hard. Saka's got to try and go this. Oops, not going to bother. So this will be it. We're counting down here and just trying to get away at the end. Lopez covering. And she'll be in the final. Well done, Mafal Lopes. She's our first finalist for the women. That's set up. It's finals day here. It will be crowning champs lunchtime on Easter Saturday. At the cost of the Caparica. Mafal Lopes with that seven. Francisco Vasalka really just struggling to find waves, essentially. There's happy scenes on the beach. Make a final in the QS and the final event of the season. You're locked in for the Challenger Series as well. So you go to that with a load of confidence to make it a final in your last contest. We're going to get a quick commercial break. When we come back, we've got our second semi-final. It's going to feature a CT veteran in Bully Nado. It's also going to feature Yolanda Hopkins, a European champ. Stay tuned.
right? Yeah. No way. Welcome back to the Caparica Surf Fest. Women's semi-final number two hitting the water. Featuring Yolanda Hopkins and Pauline Nadeau. Joining us up, all heavens in the studio. Talk you through it, Philippe Jervis. This morning, mate. How you feeling? Good morning, Paul. I'm feeling great. It's a sunny day. Some fun little waves. Finals day as well. Tough heat that one for kicker. What happened? Yeah, I was there. I was uh, down there with the uh, their coach Rodrigo, and it feels like they started off the heat uh, on the wrong position. As we go straight into this is a replay during the commercial break. First wave for Paulina Do. It's a three points. And we also apparently had a wave for uh, Yolanda, as we see here. Nice first carve, straight into a little bit of a snap. The wave didn't allow her to do go that much, but still good way to start. And this girl, Yolanda, 5.17 on this wave. Nice first carve, straight into a strong finishing turn. That's a good way to start off a hit, Paul. Pushing hard, isn't she? Here's the aggression. See her wind into the turn. Open up the body. Ado's trying not to look. She's just looking at her wave. That's a big hit with loads of spray. So I forced the issue to get that last turn in. And she could have maybe just pulled the hit before and just let that. But she tried to get there again. It's a good number. And here she is in live action. First turn with speed. It's a smaller, tighter wall here. Because of that, she realizes it's not much for me to do. But quick in putting numbers on the board, Yolanda. Already a couple of scores. Yeah, that three in for Pauline. The five one seven for Hopkins. So the opening exchange, she gets a couple of points on her opponent in that. And she's not hanging around. She takes a quick one from wide down the bank. Pushes for a turn. So a total contrast in terms of sitting there for a long time without putting points on the board. She's going at this. Yeah, I think it, the the main thing about last year was their positioning. Um, they they talked through a strategy with Rodrigo, both of them separately, obviously. Uh, but I think they they were. I think no, we were there. They were both. That's oh, and, uh, my father's first U.S. final, so she's got to be happy with that. Um, even though they they start off technically wrong on the heat on the heat. Uh, she eventually found some nice little waves. She started off pretty strong, so she's got to be very happy. Her family is also very happy. As you see, both of these surfers are sitting on a different part of the lineup, and I think that's that has been the main difference, and that's why they already have five waves read, and, and it's not even five minutes passed by. Yeah, it's so. the thing about not being first heat. You do get that advantage of just seeing mm. what happens, where the scores are, where the opportunities are, and you can adjust. That first one always tough. Basically, got to wing it to a certain amount. It was Lopez getting the best of that encounter. We've got 24, just under 25 minutes to go in this. Pauline Addo has priority. Needs to make a move here against Addo. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Yolanda plays this out. I was just speaking with her coach, and he told me that she's actually has been carrying a back injury for a, a, since the CT. She injured herself, and she actually has a, a broken coccyx, which is pretty, yeah. Th and that's why she, he told me that's why she has been surfing a little bit stiffer than the normal, because she's feel, she has been feeling that little pain, as we see Pauline on her. Nice looking wave, Paul. Yeah, great looking wave for Pauline. What she got here, hits the lip, goes past Hopkins oh. for the re-entry, and then a short carve, still going down the line, and still slashing. So fitting their maneuvers in, Miss Pauline. She ain't done yet. Goes all the way down, so that's going to feel a lot better from her. Hopkins going the wave before, didn't have priority. She's done a few of those quick ones. I think now she'll wait for the wave with a bit more space on it, but well surfed there, Pauline. That was really well surfed. The wave was really good. Probably one of the best waves we saw this morning uh, when it comes to scoring potential. But she actually surfed really well, so it's gonna. Let's see what the judges thought of it. And yeah, it feels like Yolanda is looking for those insiders, but these ones are the ones you want. Check this out. First turn, big off the top, right on the outside, straight into a lip line. 
a speed turn and then nice carving just pushing pushing it hard but not as hard as this one and so really well served by Paulina Do on this wave and the wave just kept on providing as you see here a nice little right hander it just look at this the first turn wham that's a strong one and then she has to speed it up a little with this one and pushes a lot harder on that one yeah it feels like it was it was not an easy wave to read and she did really well yeah good rhythm from her wasn't it mm -hmm. certainly the best wave we've seen it just kept offering up sections she was always in the sweet spot of the wave with the speeds that was the attempt of the successful attempt hopkins just before that she took the wave prior to that She's got a small number. Let's go and hear from our first finalist for the women. Mafalda Lopez is standing by for a chat. Yeah, boys, have with me Mafalda Lopez. Mafalda Lopez, you are into the final. You started off the really well with the seven points. How do you feel? I'm super happy to make this one. Uh, Kika is surfing so good, so I was kind of nervous to go against her. But I was lucky to get that one. I had the prio, so I tried to do my best and I got a seven. So I was like confident for the rest of the heat. It was a pretty slow eat, but I'm happy to make it. On that seven points you had the inside position, was there something that you really wanted when the eat started? Uh, yeah, you always want it. Sometimes you have to give it up, but I, I went like inside of the water on the right to have the, the prio, so <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it was smart from you. Uh, is the same board from yesterday or a different approach today? It's the same. Uh, I tried the my epoxy in the morning and it was feeling good, but I don't know, I, I've been surfing with this one and I was confident and it worked, so... <laughs> Who do you want to face in the final, Pauline or Yolanda Hopkins? Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's the same, I guess. Uh, wh whoever wins and I'll, I'll try to win, <laughs> so yeah. Seems like a plan. Good luck in the final and congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Back to you, boys. Great stuff, Afado Lopez in another final here at Costa de Caparica. She's absolutely stoked. Strong performance in the semi. Good score from the get-go. Built the platform. That's why she's in the final. Who's she going to face? One of these two. Number in for Addo 593. Here's Hopkins using the priority, trying to come from a long way back. That wave runs away. So didn't put loads of points up there. And priority will be back with Addo. 593 for her last effort. Yeah, that was a pretty a pretty nice score, and, and she's going to be happy with that one. And we now with, with the priority, a little bit of, not a mistake by Yolanda, but the wave looked like it was going to be a good one. Unfortunately, just sped up a little, and, and she was only able to do that, do that little floater. And so things going pretty well to Pauline right now, because she has the priority, and she needs to improve on that three points. 20 on the clock. Pauline Addo coming into this with ton of experience competing at various levels including her years on the championship tour and hopkins she wants to get another win essentially she just won the last event in morocco she's the european champion she's got to get out of this semi right now and it's five on seven early on other than that she's been scrapping around to try and improve and hasn't really been able to just a two seven three the best of the four waves since her opener. We were on hold this one because of the tide. We wanted to let it turn off the low. Let's have a look. Let's remind ourselves exactly where we are in terms of today's tide chart. Low water at 10.30. So that was half an hour or so ago, 40 minutes. So we've got the incoming now. And that should make things favourable for the best tide getting up towards mid for our finals here, Philly. Uh, yeah, it's it's looking nice for the surfers and looking nice for the, for the competitors because... Uh, as we see here, Yolanda looking at this one uh, still is the the kind of waves that uh, Yolanda needs to make those scores. But yeah, it's the, the tide. Obviously, with this super low tide, it's it's kind of better this way because you you need the waves to break outside on those on those sandbanks. And as soon as it puts a little bit of water on that, we might get a little push because it's supposed to have a little push on the swell today. Uh, let's hope for it. As we see, you'll end up in riding. Here goes Hopkins. Squares off, big crack. And then pushing hard with the calf. Digs it in a little too hard, just slightly over-egging that. She didn't need to push quite that hard then. The requirement was 377. If you do a two-turn combo, especially when your first turn was that strong, that's probably 
going to be a score of that order, but just trying to squeeze a little extra and a little too much, forcing it slightly on the second turn. Yeah, she did pretty well here. The wave was kind of small and here, just uh, she got up in that rail. Uh, as you can see, her coach just, he felt that. Um, it's a 2.9 fee, she improves her situation, but still, she still needs a 3.7. So. Plenty of time left for her. Over 17 minutes and 40 seconds to go in this, our second semi-final for the women. Welcome to finals day at the Caparica Surf Fest. We'll be crowning champions here for the event, concluding our season on the qualified series, just gone around Europe. And sending surfers to the Challenger Series, of course. That's the reason for the QS. And that kicks off next month in Australia. These two, they're going. Oh yeah, that's for sure. Uh, both of them are going and they're gonna have the first stop straight away at Snapper Rocks. That's gotta be one of the best waves in Australia and one of the most fun contests you can ever compete in. Because surfing in Snapper Rocks with just a couple of guys, it, it looks really good. And I think it's every surfer's dream because the wave is that good and it's always that crowded as well. So it's gonna be interesting because I love to see um, are you, are you still have the city up there, so it's going to be interesting to see. All right, so far in this one, it's Pauline Addo with just two ways ridden, but she's got the lead. She's got priority as well. Advantage is with the French woman, Yolanda Hopkins. She'll be looking to come back in the remaining 16 or so minutes of this one. We'll be back with the second semi from Caparica right after this. Welcome back to live coverage as we pick up Pauline Addo, the leader in the second semi-final on the end of a, presumably was a long ride. Addo with the lead in this one by virtue of that 593. That's the high score of this seat. So back up to three as we wait for this number to come in. And she had that priority for five minutes or so, was patient, took that wave. Let's see where this puts up. Let's have a look. A small little insider, but with a lot of wall on it. So Pauline with a couple of nice turns, she's going to finish this one off a little bit of a floater and she's going to push it a lot harder than that one. And finishing it off right on the inside. So it's going to be a good backup. I think she might improve on that three points, a smaller wave. And now uh, Yolanda has a bit of an opportunity just to, to try and find that steep wall, bigger wave. It's still ages to go in the seat right 13 and a half minutes she only needs a 377 she's got priority as well she's been really busy as you said those seven waves now it's time to surf smart yeah so now wait it's... for the right opportunity wait for one crucially 
it doesn't go too quick down the bank. Yeah, it's time to just wait as long as she wants to and as long as she needs to for that perfect little wave, a smaller, uh, b a bigger one. Uh, wave like we saw Paulina Doding doing that 5.93 uh, with 13 minutes remaining. That's as we see, she decides to go on this one. Huge first turn straight into a nice cutback. And just that two turn combo. Uh, the, the requirement improved a little. She needs a 4.94. But um, what do you think? That it, was that a good strategy? Yeah, we thought she would be a little patient. She decided to take this 4.94, that requirement, because Pauline did improve. Big first turn, mm -hmm. a lot of power into it. The way it just goes a little soft. She jams in. Crucially got the completions. What she would have been hoping to do with that previous wave. Now priority will be back with Pauline Addo. She needs just shy of a five, essentially. I think what Pauline Addo did, the number of turns she did for her 5.93. Yolanda needs a point less than that. It's one good turn on the lip. The other one was kind of a face turn. It was a sharp one, but normally they don't pay huge in terms of points. Yeah, I think it's going to be close, but it, it won't be on that five-point range. Uh, actually, we got it. It's a 4.27, so not enough. Uh, she kind of wasted the pressure. She, she, she didn't waste it, but she decided to, to to take the to make the decision of going on that wave when she had a little bit. She had the priority, and as you can, as you said, she could have waited for a little bit longer. Yeah, I mean they both improved their scores by using their priority. So from that point of view, kind of what you want to do. However, the set waves out here. You've seen seven go down this morning. You've been hoping to go up the scale. Otherwise, it just leaves it really, really tight. Let's see what happens with the rhythm of the sets in the remaining 12, 11 or so minutes in this. Some lines filling in. The tide will push up as well. Hopefully, it'll kick up things a touch. There was a little more energy. Just a slight kick up in the period. Up to 13 seconds as well for the afternoon. So let's see what happens for the rest of this heat. But Hopkins is... Now gonna have to decide, does she just stay busy and chase down that 494? Or does she try and wait for a bit of quality, try and get priority after Pauline takes away? There's some lines coming through. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough decision to make right now because she has the second priority. There's not a lot of opportunities out there. I don't know, maybe, maybe she will try and sell something to Pauline just to make sure she has the priority again and she can wait or otherwise just try to find the wave that Pauline doesn't actually see or um, I don't know you need a little bit of luck on this one because there's not too many opportunities there's a few lines out there but you have to be very very confident and intuitive on your on your decisions 10 on the clock and after a bit of a reposition I'll just have to continue to be patient as Hopkins will try and get wide enough to take this wave Addo gives a Bit of a look and realizes there's not much on offer there take that if you want which yolanda isn't able to do there's a soft wave she lets it go pauline staying close to yolanda here that's the experience yeah she won't be that far because as i said this is a small window opportunity there's a few lines out the back let's see pauline is going to make a move on this one uh, she tries to improve on a 4.17 addo first turn's good and then she'll get floats, try and get back on the open face, which she does. A quick snap. And then using the rail, just whipping around. All right, here goes Hopkins. What's she got? She's got another one of these ways that pushes away from her. She gets the release on the tail. Now, is she going to get priority here? This could be a crucial paddle out the back because Addo will be quite a long way, I think, down the sandbar. Can Hopkins punch through and get priority? They'll both get numbers. Here's Yolanda's wave. It's a smaller wave, and again, obviously she did really good on that finishing turn, but again, she she kind of wasted that opportunity with the, the priority just going on this one. That's a really good turn. It's going to be interesting to see if the judges will reward it higher than a five. She puts the tail, she drifts the, those fins a little bit, and 
that's actually a really good turn. So I don't know, but this one, this wave had a lot of potential comparing to to Yolanda's wave. A nice first turn, a bit of a float to try and go around the section. She's gonna hit it one more time, and she's gonna do a wrap around cutback just to finish this one off. I don't know that if that's gonna improve on that on that low score of Pauline. The longer wave of multiple turns, or the one big hit with a bit of flair from Yolanda. That's the decision that's with our panel right now. Let's see where they put that. They're going to take their time. Watch those replays. Also, just look at other scores that have come in this heat. That was a ninth wave for Hopkins. Comes in low for Ado. 363. Doesn't improve. So, was Hopkins' turn better than a 494? It was pretty critical. She released the tail, she released the fins. But let's see where this number goes. She did get priority. So, first part was to make sure she had priority and had another shot at a set wave. Wait for her number to come through. She looks nervous out here. She's ridden nine waves. And ever since that five at the beginning of the heat, she hasn't been able to match that quality. She needs to here to go into the lead. A five or better will do it. 494 on your screen is a requirement. Judges are having a good think, which generally tends us towards thinking it's going to be close, right? If it was just a three, they would lock it in. If it was a, a 10, or, you know, an excellent score, exactly. it would have dropped. So they're, they're taking their time, actually. Um, so it's going to be a close call, this one. But crucially, when the score does come through, she'll have priority in the lineup as well. Ado will paddle past and just maintain her composure. She certainly caught the better ways in, in this semi-final as Pauline. Has she maybe just slightly undersurfed a touch? She's been a bit light on her feet. Her turns are a bit short. Yeah, that's what I was about to say, because she has been catching the better waves, but at the same time, Yolanda has been pushing a lot harder on those turns. So, uh, as we see, a nice line coming from the, from the back on this one. Let's see if it provides some opportunity for the girls. As we see, Yolanda is looking at it. She's a long way back here. She's, is she going to get down the line on this wave? She backs herself to do it. Here she goes with loads of speed. Good first turn with the release. It is... Just that one turn before a foam climb. Meanwhile, Pauline right behind her, down the line, off the bottom, a slice off the top. There's mm. another. And oh. again, so again, got the better of the waves yeah. in that exchange. <laughs> and we're still waiting for the previous score to come in for Yolanda before we get that exchange as well. So judges with a bit to do here. It does seem to be the story of this one. Pauline's getting the runners with multiple turns. Yolanda's getting shorter sections that are a bit steeper and quicker. Yeah, as you see here, um, the wave choice by Pauline has been on point and, and the wave choice by Yolanda hasn't been that good And because this wave had a lot of a lot of offerings. So uh, very nice surfing by um, Pauline. And as we see here, a bit of a faster wave. She puts it really strong on that one. So that's got to be one of the best turns of this seat so far. But yeah, she didn't, she couldn't even go for that second turn. And the judges like combination of major turns. So yeah, this was nice. So a five drops in for Yolanda. She goes to the lead. But where's this going to go for Pauline? Think of a five, nine, three early on. Here's another look. See Yolanda with much more speed from the wow. high line. It's the one turn and a clean phone, a clean phone climb. But I, I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting because, as we see, Yolanda on a nice-looking wave. Let's see what does this provide. Nice first snap, straight into an, another snap. A little bit of conservative there, and then finish that one off. So, uh, yeah, Paul. What are the scores? Numbers in. Addo gets a 5 6 7, which means Hopkins now looking for 6 4 3. So a number to come in for Yolanda. 6 4 3. It's not going to be it. She's going to get a 4 when our last judge. 4 3 7. So we remain as we are. Addo. Two decent fives for her. She has caught by far the better waves. And Hopkins. Will make her way out to the lineup with second priority. That last wave by Orlando, it, it, it was definitely the best wave she caught. 
but it felt like she was soft rhythm the whole wave and it's going to be interesting to see i don't think that's going to play out on, on the scores and we also had last wave of i know we already had last wave of poly so last wave of yolanda 4.63 so that's not enough and she has second priority now with three minutes remaining so pauline will will have a little bit of an advantage for you yeah six four three it's quite a solid number in the final three minutes hopkins will just try and scrap around but so far our scoring potential has been really limited on these smaller waves this is a soft one and she tries to push hard there's no way she's going to get into the sixes on a wave like that she needs a lot more energy out of the sections mm -hmm. yeah she needs to be getting those bigger ones she actually got one but unfortunately she kind of under surfed it as we're going to see the recap because um, we, we're going to check what the girls did so far. So the landed just getting, she started off pretty well with a bigger wave, nice nice couple of really strong turns. And she backed it up with some, as we see here, Pauline on the best, on the best looking waves. Those waves just kept on providing for her and a combination of some really nice turns and just going for it and yeah i think overall the the wave choice by pauline has been on point and the wave choice by yolanda sometimes she has been getting stuck on getting those insiders and that makes a lot of difference especially on the scores as we see that this is a five points a bit of a stronger turn by by yolanda with a bit of a fin release but pauline yeah as you can see those bit of a runners that allowed you to go top to bottom uh, straight away from the outside so that's that's other waves that you want to catch definitely final 90 seconds of this Addo with the lead with priority as well Hopkins is on the wrong side of a 643 right now she's been really busy 12 waves it's not about the quantity though it's all about the quality of the surfing and she's been just making choices maybe a little hurried just feel like maybe she could have adjusted the tactic a bit we talked about it just for the halfway point she's whenever she's got priority she's never holding on to it she's getting away straight away yeah. even to go in the first wave of the set when it does feel like the second waves generally have been a little bit better and she's just feels like maybe she's just trying to force it a bit mm -hmm. not necessarily on the wave but just in terms of her lineup management by contrast, Pauline Addo's surf five ways, but crucially, she's got, by far, almost in every exchange, she's got the waves that offer more sections for scoring. And each time, Yolanda's forced to push one turn really hard, which looks good, but unable to really get out of the fives and go up the scale. Yeah, to go up there, you need to, to make some combinations. And fortunately, Yolanda has been catching waves that only allow her to go for that one big turn. But still, even that big turn, if the wave is small, um, it's not going to have that huge and wow factor that you need. As we see both of them looking at this one, Pauline lets, lets Yolanda go. It's a small looking wave. Again, nice choice by Pauline. The wave just dies completely on um, Yolanda. So very intelligent and smart hit by Pauline Odo. Yeah, well served. She's worthy of her place in the final. Well, she'll be taking on Mafalda Lopes. That's coming up in around about an hour's time, our women's final. But very well done to Pauline Addo, who's finished the season really strong in another final on the qualifying series. And gets a little payback on Hopkins. <laughs> and she'll be absolutely delighted to be in the final. Where she's going to need to bring her A game against Mafalda Lopes because she's absolutely ripping in this. We're going to head to men's semi final soon, real soon, in fact. We're going to check out Deva Bushka and Marco Minya. They're coming up in the first one Monday. We'll come back in for the call. We'll be right back.
there, right? Yeah. No way. Welcome back to the Costa Caprica. There's your two semi-finalists, toe to toe, shoulder to shoulder. And there's a lot on the line in this semi-final. Of course there is. It's a semi-final of a 3,000 qualifying series event. But if Tevo Buscar can get through this, he is on the Challenger Series. He's booked a, himself a spot at Snapper Rocks. And if Marco Migno wins this, he's the European champion of the qualifying series for 2023. My name's Ben Mundy. I'm joined in the booth by Philippe Jarvis. So there's a lot going on here, a lot of action, and they're sticking to each other pretty tight. Yeah, so Deva gets through this heat and he qualifies for the challengers, is that it? That's it. And if Marco gets through this heat, he's an European champion. That's right, and they both can't oh. happen. It's gotta be one or the other. Oh, oh that would be, that, that, would, that would be, <laughs> I don't even know what to say because I know Marco wants to be uh, European champion, but I really I know Teva wants to be on those challengers. So yeah, what are you thinking? A couple of big prizes. Yeah, it's huge, 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 huge. So we'll see. We've already booked our finalists for the women's. We've seen Pauline Adeau up against Mafada Lopes in that final. Now we've got the two semi-finals of the men's to see who can make all that. Looks like Migno is. Just moving away from his opponent. I don't mind that. We were talking about that, Philippe. That all important at the start of the heat, there's no priority. So it's just a matter of who catches the first wave, um, who's on the inside. But it's an interesting choice. You know, what, you know, do you try and fight for that inside or do you stick next to your opponent? Or, you know, what what, what do you do? It depends on your game plan because there's, there's a couple of the different opportunities throughout the lineup. Um, there's a couple of waves that can actually come and appear on the left side of the of the beach and there's a few ones that actually they uh, they, they they appear right where uh, TV is sitting so it's going to be interesting because there's opportunities on both sides of the beach and i think it, it depends you have to be a little lucky as well you know yeah but marco sort of paddled down and then Tevis kind of followed him so he's obviously kind of trying to keep him in within a little bit of range just to say he's in within sort of distance but yeah because you don't want to be that you don't want to be too deep on the lineup because we saw Mafalda and, and Kika Vazelko did exactly that as we see Marco up and riding first blood Marco Migno nice first turn oh nice sharp he's been so sharp all week not dynamic as yet but first wave generating speed and just kicks out so looking good Nothing dynamic. Jason, his coach, I'm pretty sure he likes it. He was happy with that. You can tell by his body language. He worked really hard, Marco. Obviously now booked his spot in the Challenger Series. He was talking uh, with us in the booth about, you know, he spent a lot of time at Snapper Rocks growing up. Really well-traveled kid, based in Mexico, but uh, European um, or French heritage. So he's, he's traveled all around the world. And, uh, he, he can't wait to get down to, to Snapper and showcase what he's got that's a little bit off though right now he's just trying to concentrate on this heat here he goes looks behind him and it just sort of fades off not a bad strategy to stay busy huh yeah especially if you don't have priority and there's not a, and and there's an opportunity coming in your way just might as well just go for it uh, this is marco's first ride just trying to put the, the feet on the wax, a, a combination of some nice turns. The wave kind of flats out on him. Uh, but still, yeah, 
There are surfers that actually like to start off a hit fast, even though it's not a big score. You're just feeling the board, you're feeling the conditions, and and I think they're, they're going to play different strategies here because I think Teva, it's a bigger guy. He needs those bigger waves. Otherwise, it's going to be it's going to be weird. Yeah, he likes it, but I think that was a little bit safe from Marco. Like that, that there was two turns there. It was only a small wave, sure, but. I think given his... You think it's the nervous system? I think system he could have pushed it. Yeah, I think he could have pushed it. A bit. He only got a 3.67. Judges didn't reward it. I think there was a bit more room there on that on that wave just to throw a bit of fins or just throw a bit of risk. Yeah, and but sometimes, yeah, it, it, there's a lot at stake and you can you can get caught up in emotions and feelings and maybe he didn't feel that confident to go as big as he wanted. Uh, and maybe he's going to try and build that confidence throughout the heat because uh, uh, that happens a lot of times. You start slow, you're building momentum, you're building confidence, and uh, on the last 15 minutes of the heat, you're already surfing uh, your usual surf. No? Yeah, true, but I just think in a semi final, yeah, you event, have to be there you, you straight have, away. You can't, you can't afford to build yeah, momentum. That's true. Yeah. You kind of got to go in pretty hard. And fast. Especially yeah, with conditions as low as they are today, you have to be. Uh, on spot, spot on straight away. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, especially maybe, given uh, how you know progressive he's been, like and how he's, he's been on form. His confidence is great. He's been, you know, one of those guys that yesterday got the highest heat total of the whole event with a mix of carbs, uh, airs. I mean, just you know, if you look at the judging criteria, you'll see that he was just ticking all the boxes. The judging criteria. There's the judges. Uh, and there's the criteria on the left. So in commitment, degree of difficulty, innovation, progression, combination of major manoeuvres, variety of manoeuvres, and speed, power, and flow. So there's five, you know, main kind of categories there. And mm -hmm. yesterday in his heat, he pretty much went through, ticked them all <laughs> off, didn't he? Yeah, he did, definitely. Off the one wave. Commitment with those huge airs, uh, innovation in progression with, with the airs again, and the full rotation, and variety of manoeuvres, obviously, it, even the airs were different, so uh, that shows how, it, how, and he surfed also, he surfed with speed, power, and flow, because he had a lot of speed that allows him to go as big as possible, and uh, yeah, he ticked all the bosses, and that's why he, get, he had some of the highest scores of the event so far, because yeah. it just, he was right there with the judge, judging criteria. Yeah, and that's why that first wave of his, which was uh, just a small wave, and 3.67, it didn't, you know, had no progression. Um, yeah, it's a bit of speed. And, and a bit of flow. Um, there's no variety of maneuvers, so um, that's just an example of you know what what you need to do to get up to that excellent score range. If you can at least hit three of those major categories, you're in the good shout. But right now, it's enough to get him in a, a slender lead. 20 minutes on the clock. Yeah, Teba came in the booth yesterday, and he, geez, he played a straight bat. He wasn't, you know, he's. He wasn't getting ahead, ahead of himself. He wasn't thinking about the challenge series. He was trying to um, just avoid all that kind of extra pressure. Mm -hmm. um, and he was just focusing on the heat. But now, well, he wouldn't have sort of planned to have no waves in the first 10 minutes, would he? Yeah, it's it's a tough one. As you can see, this is the perfect this is a perfect shot. Look how far they are from each other, and there's a lot of opportunities on this side of the beach as we see Marco up and riding on this yeah, one. Yeah, live action. So Marco again swinging. Once you get this time, nice little check turn. A bit more spray there, and then that's a bit more dynamic, and that's what we want to see. So you're right. Maybe you were right, Philippe, just in terms of building the confidence. But those three turns, he pushed it harder. He hit those. Um, criteria a bit better mm -hmm. and he finished off strong yeah the wave started off kind of slow he managed to get the setup turn and then straight into the nice snap but this is the money turn look at that just pushing a lot of a lot of power on that back foot and just shifting the weight perfectly to finish that one off as you see here again just going with a bit of a flow but this one just waits for the right moment to attack drift the fins Center of gravity super low, and Jason Paris is looking happy with that. Yeah, they love that. Six point ride for Marco, or was it a European junior champion? Now he's hoping to be the main man. Right now, though, speaking of European champions, I think we've got Joanna Garnell down there on the beach with Paul Nadeau. 
Yeah, boys, I have with me Paulina do Pauline. You've won here before, you're in the final. Uh, do you feel any extra pressure to win it again? <laughs> uh, no, I don't, I don't actually feel a lot of pressure, just uh, excitement, really. Uh, I'm in the Challengers, so it was the main goal for this season. And uh, yeah, I just, I love this place. I, I enjoy my time here, so it would be a bonus really to win, even if, if it's always the, the goal to win the event when, when you get to an event. But uh, yeah, from here, it's all bonus. You've been competing for a long time now. What's the recipe for your consistency in competition surfing? Um, I think, uh, I don't know, the pleasure of just being in the water and competing is, is always there. And I think it's the main thing. Uh, obviously, obviously I'm, I'm not the same person that I was when I was 20, but uh, I don't know. I've, I think over the years I learned more about myself and how I function and what's the best recipe for me. So I don't know. I try to keep it going. <laughs> it's looked like it's working because you've been here for a long time now. So congrats and good luck for the final. Thank you. <laughs> Back to you, boys. Okay. Thanks, Chico. Thanks, Pauline. In live action, Teva Bushkelik's first wave. Oh. Nice. Three turn oh, combo. That's a good So start. he waited a while to get in, but he did. We just saw Marco while we're talking to Pauline. He did a rot rotor on the end there. So Teva's back in it. And also uh, Marco placing another score as well. So things starting to heat up finally. And you like that, Jervis. You're a goofy foot up. And that backhand style was pretty, pretty good. Yeah, he's, Teva is so sharp. Just set up that turn and then hits it really strong and finish it off strong, even stronger with that bit of a, a, a lip floater uh, maneuver. This one, this is the money turn. Wow, a lot of power. He had been doing these transitions and this flow throughout the whole contest. As we see, Marco on a smaller inside, you can see straight away that he was going to go for the air. I don't think that's going to be that that much of a high score. I really like, I'm a fan of his uh, climbs. Yeah, a lot of <clears throat> imagination on those. And yeah, it was a bit of an air reverse, nothing too crazy, nothing too special. And it's, uh, as you can see here, it didn't go that high. It's, uh, it always feels good doing an air on a hit. And that's, that's the truth but he needs to be bigger than that just to get those huge scores. But still, it's his backup, five points. Yeah, he got a five point for that. They've been rewarding progression, those airs, all week. And he's been one of the main beneficiaries of that. And he gets a six and a five. That three turn combo for Teva was a 4.5. So not much in it at the moment. Now yeah, they're on the same kind of bank. Marco with priority. Teva sitting right on top of him, getting up in his grill. How do you maintain like the cold blood, knowing that you're 15 minutes away from getting a European champion? <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's just hard, isn't it? It's all about all the heat drills you do, all the training, all the work they work with their coaches. It kind of comes down to these type of moments when it's all on the line. You've got to deliver. You've got to surf to your, you know. Uh, absolute best. And we see the two getting close. Marco looks a bit more interested in the next one. Teva doesn't have priority, so he's just trying to get in and around. But no, it's just reposition himself. Nothing going on there. 15 minutes. Mm. I mean, the European title is huge, but I tell you what, that Challenger series exactly. is kind of worth even more in some respects. We see Marco, he's pulling the trigger. Here he goes. So live action. Oh, first turn strong. Nice little wrap. Waiting for a finish here. Puts the brake, puts the speed on, puts the gas on. And then just slides it out. He's such, such a nice style. You never know what's going to come. You know, it's a really un he's smooth, but he's unpredictable. Yeah, I, I really love that in surfing. When a surfer uh, makes you think what he's about to do, because sometimes it looks like he's going to do something and, it is, it, and he does something completely different. And that, even for the judges, it's good because uh, there's a few surfers that can be a little repetitive and you can, you can see straight away what they're going to do. But Marco is definitely not one of those. He's yeah, super exactly. unpredictable and fast and sharp. And as we see here, just idolizing that priority. Nice for snap. 
straight into a nice wraparound cap back in this part. He needs to get over that flat section of the wave. It, it looked like he was going to go for the air, but he decided just to do a bit of a fin release um, snap on the on the finishing turn, and that was really good by by Marco. Let's see if it's going to improve his situation. He needs to to better five points. Um, we'll see what the judges thought of that. As you see here, just dripping those fins, just let it really slide. Very technical, technical. surfing, yeah. wasn't it? Exactly, really good technique. I'm not sure if it's going to beat. It doesn't beat. He's aired for that five, so judges pinning that down the 4.5. Just lacked a, it was a small wave, obviously, but just lacked a little bit of um, you know, pace and speed to it. Still maintaining a lead. Not a huge run. tepper has been way more patient. Now he's got priority, so he'll be able to dictate his next move on his own terms. Mignot's staying busy. He's paddling down the line. But there's another right-hander a bit further down. And he only needs one section. Can't get that one. Yeah, that Challenger series carrot. So if Teva stands, we're pretty sure if he gets through this, makes the final, he gets that all important. There's only seven spots on the Challenger series, and that yeah, and that's it's, huge. That's I mean, that's your next kind of six months. Yeah, the, of planned the, out, you know. The question that I that I did about Marco Mino and and imagining and having the cold blood to think about it. I'm 12 minutes away from being European champion. Teva has been asking the same exact question, but but instead he's thinking I'm 12 minutes away from qualifying for the Challenger Series and and maybe change my life. So uh, so that's gotta that's gotta be. It's really hard. Yeah, in terms of what psychologically, yeah. it's really hard to to remain calm and make sure you just don't get ahead of yourself and. Yeah. And especially Teva right now is a bit against the ropes, and there's not too much there on, out there, and you gotta play it out with yourself, and you gotta start second guessing yourself. Yeah, and in terms of you know like actual life changing or how it affects your your career, like the European Championship, it's you know it's a it's an accolade you'll have it for life. No one can ever take it away from you. In terms of actual um, you know career wise and what mm -hmm. what you know what a Challenger Series spot can do. It's probably the bigger prize. Um, and Teva really needs to just get back in this game and see, give himself a shot at it. It's come so close. Mignot you know, staying busy, live action. Here he goes again. No turns yet, he's gonna go to the air, you'd think. Just does it, he's got those on lock. Just, I don't mind this approach. Just keep clocking up scores, <laughs> keep catching waves. It's so annoying like, it, being in Teva's position right now. You just see the other surfing catching tons of waves and doing snaps and doing airs like this. It's It's got to hurt because you're out there waiting for something special and, and you just look at him looking and again, he's, he's catching a wave again. What is he about to do? Nice first snap and then straight into the air. Did he land it? He just wait and as soon as Marco stands up again. He's gonna see that that landing. Uh, I don't think that's gonna be um, that big of a score, but still, it puts a lot of pressure on Teva because that's gotta hurt. Just watching that guy, the other guy, just going for it on every single wave. And <laughs> yeah, different styles, different approaches, aren't they? You can just tell Marco's kind of got that intensity. He's kind of a high energy kind of a guy. Tevas a bit more laid back. Yeah, even like in real first. life, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. It reflects their kind of personalities. Tevas just waits, you know, just tries to stick to those waves that suit his surfing best. And uh, you know, Marco's not improving his score with those waves. So Tevas will know that. Yeah. You know, like he's not going to give up priority for those those little insiders. He needs a 6.5 as it stands. So I mean, it's nowhere way in the world he just would have hoped to have just one one wave at this stage. Marco going again. Uh, can't quite get on it. He's sort of not waiting for the sets, and that means those little in between ones they're smaller. But yeah, you know what? If you give, you know, if you give him enough chance, he's gonna, he's gonna do something special, you'd imagine. Oh yeah, definitely. But you know, I'm looking at the next heat, and I can see the heat going exactly the same way because 
Uh, both Vasco and Dev are big boys, and they just need that extra size on the on those waves just to put something special. And I can definitely see on the next hit, Vasco's just waiting for those waves and just then just going all over him and doing. So it's gonna be interesting to see how how they're looking at this hit and how they're gonna make their own uh, strategy for the next one. Because so far it's paying off being active, but I don't I don't know. That's always because the, if the wave comes, Teva, Teva is more than a surfer to get that 6.5, so it just needs that special little wave. Yeah, he's waiting patiently. Eight and a half minutes remaining. Needs that 6.5 to get through to the final. His dad is his coach. Dad's a great surf coach. Coaches also Ramsey Pukain, like CT surfer from Morocco. So he's got the best advice. His dad's yeah, they would have had a, a strategy. It would have been pretty clear. And uh, just about simply getting the best waves. Mm -hmm. So far, Teva hasn't panicked. Still within striking distance. Yeah, it can be a little bit frustrating still because you're just waiting for something that it hasn't come for the last 23 minutes. So it's, it's a hard one because if if the if the hit finishes up like this, he's gonna be mad, but he's not gonna be mad at himself because he knew what he had to do. It's just the wave, the, the ocean didn't cooperate. So, uh, and obviously, it's always hard to blame the ocean, but sometimes it happens on the concerts too. Yeah, sometimes the luck of the draw to a to a to a degree. It's supposed to be a slight little kick as the day progresses in terms of swell, tiny bit of size, a bit of extra period. So hopefully that will fill in over the course of the next hour or so. Teva needs it the next few minutes, so he, he hasn't got an hour to wait. He's got seven minutes on the clock. He's had one wave. And he needs to get another one quickly and a 6.5. His last wave was ridden 10 minutes ago. <laughs> so he waited 10 minutes. Boy, so that's yeah, 15, he waited 15 minutes for his first wave, got a wave, and he's waited 10 minutes for his second one. And uh, now he's still just waiting patiently. Yeah, I feel like the tide is super, super low right now. And as soon as we'll have one hour, an hour and a half of that tide coming in, we might have a push again. It's just that time. He looks so nervous. He does, he does, like, you know that coach is supposed to exude a calmness. He doesn't really like... I know. Uh, I don't, I, yeah, Michael won't be looking Michael at it. I can't see yeah. him, I know. But still, he's like... Uh, <sighs> he's feeling it every wave. He's he's right in his corner. It's going to be interesting because um, uh, it's going to be if if he gets through this heat, he's going to be a crown European champion. And I th I know that uh, Jason, uh, you will show us how much we'll meant to him, and also Marco as well because he has been super straightforward on his interviews. Like, it, um, it feels like people are kind of against him and. Uh, at some point of his life and especially at this contest and out of nowhere he might do a little surprise here with five minutes remaining yeah it, that was they will set that goal at the start of the year first goal qualify for the challenger series second goal win the qualifying series events and uh well as of as of right now he's he's ticked one box and he's about five minutes away from ticking the next one and then the next goal, obviously, will be to win the whole thing, the whole event. It's been really quiet in this last sort of five minutes. But I'm going to go through the heat, heat recap and see how we got to where we are right now. Yeah, Marco started off pretty, pretty strong with some nice turns, just, just getting that momentum and that confidence that you need on these kind of heats. Um, it just was non-stop. It was all over the place, just getting some nice waves and getting some turns like this done. And also this finishing turn is probably one of the best turns of the of the of this heat. But also, that's the thing about surfers like Marco. They can get little insiders and turn a wave with zero scoring potential into a five points. Uh, and this guy just that one wave in in, in ho almost half an hour of surfing really good surfing we know he, kn he can do it but he just needs that bit of it of an opportunity as we see him up and riding 
Oh my god. Yeah, so wait. he's waited a long time. <laughs> <laughs> sit and wait. That's yeah. exactly what he said. Yeah. Just sit and wait. See, Teva just wait a long time for that. The wave didn't look like a good choice of wave. It was running off quick, and because it was running off quick, he had to force it, and he just made a big mm -hmm. error. So, you know, sometimes those type of errors, you can wash them off. But when you've waited so long, when you've got no time, you'll, you'll know that that's potentially... Fatal. Well, he, I mean, he's not going to lose his life. Right? It's still. Uh, <laughs> no, it's you know. fatal for this heat. Yeah. Yeah. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. When when you're with just that one wave and you have the priority and and, and you make a bit of a mistake, like with three minutes remaining, that got kind of a place in your head, especially when it's this low. Uh, he knows that Marco is gonna is gonna take the control of the heats right now, so he's gonna just. Be all over him, paddling again with, with him, just making sure he doesn't make any subtle movements and doesn't make sure he doesn't get one of the best waves of the heat. As we see, a bit of a bigger wave approaching. Teva is looking. Is he going to force Marco to go? No, because the wave didn't, didn't offer that much. And yeah, just a bit of a bummer by Teva. The time is running out. There's not too many. Uh, too many options out there and both of the surfers are paddling pretty close that's so weird sometimes you, you can actually uh, become a physical altercation here because he's gonna let him go yep so Tevra on the left called the bluff first time was strong and then just uh, went into deep water he's kind of running out of time he's forcing the issue Marco keeping a really close eye on him Good strategy from Marco Mino. Didn't fall for that trap, and uh, that wave not going to be of any use to Teva. Two minutes on the clock. Marco in a box position. Teva's had one of those heats where you know it'll be a, a big learning curve. I think you look back at it, back at it, and see what he could have done differently. Mino yeah. Mino, he spotted something out the back, and he'll go. If only block, mm. I don't know if that's going to be a paddle. A lost priority or not. No, I don't think so. I don't think he, he actually at it. He's not happy, but I think he actually did really well there because Teva didn't show any any interest uh, on that wave, and Mark was just waiting to see if Teva would show some interest. And as soon as he understood that Teva was not even looking at it, he just stopped paddling. So it doesn't show any commitment with the paddling, so the judges won't, won't shift that priority. So, yeah, very well played by Marco there. Teva is not looking happy with that decision, but I think the judges got it right this time. As you can see, they're, they're I so mean, close. I mean, it's been convincing. Like, you look at uh, Marco's got two throwaway scores that are better than Teva's best mm -hmm. wave. So, you know, he's he's been just pretty commanding. You know, caught a lot of waves, surfed him well, and now he's not going to let him go. Look, he's all over him like oh. a deep suit. 40 seconds to be you European know, they, champion. They, I would be paddling all over him. They're just doing it <laughs> together. They would paddle down to the Algarve if that's what it takes. Oh, yeah, definitely. And 30 seconds on the clock. And I don't see Teva getting out of this little box he's in. Minyo all over him. If a wave oh. comes through, he's going to catch it. And no he knows. He knows already. Yeah. Yeah, he'd be doing it, the vice versa. It's a cut, cut and thrust of competition. Don't think it these knows. sets are going to come in in time. So five seconds on the clock. It looks like it's all over for Teva. He's one heat off, potentially making the challenger series. That's got to hurt, but he's got a new European qualifying series champion. That's that man there, Marco Migno. He surfed great. He's convincing, confident. And you actually think you've still got a bit left in the tank as well. So that is Marco through. And he's in the final. He's not Who showing any him? emotion. No, nah, <laughs> the job's not done yet. Yeah, that's sense. true. That's true. You think, so like, okay, that's it. I'm, you know, I'm in the final now. You'll want to win it. Whether it will be Vasco Ribeiro or Justin Bacret, well, we're about to find out. About to find out who is going to get that now.
It's going to be a big battle, two heavy hitters. But that man on your screen, been one of the form surface of the event. He's been ripping all week, and now he's in the final. Will that man there, Justin Pacret, join him? Or will that man there, Vasco Ribeiro? We're about to find out. We're going to have a short commercial break and come back with more live action right after this. Welcome back, and there's some emotion now he's showing it. Marco Mignot, the European qualifying series champion. <laughs> Look at him, he's absolutely pumped. That means a lot to him. There's his coach, they are super wrapped with the, with the whole way it's gone out. They've worked really hard together. And <laughs> you see the emotion, it's fantastic. My name's Ben Money, I'm drawing a Paul Evans. What do, you, what, do you, what do you think about this, Paul? Do you think, it, you think, he, think he's happy about life? Yeah, absolutely incredible moment for Marco. And you go into the challenges, but you're also going with confidence in that you won your region. So there's only going to be a handful of people with those among those surfers who have won their region to come in. And he's not short on confidence anyway, I would say. He's quite a confident young man, but that little extra kick, love it. Yeah, as I said, it would have set the goals at the start of the series. And it's played off okay. Vasco Ribeiro so in the break. A local hope. Last Portuguese surfer left in the men's division, and he's looking sharp. And Justin Bacret. Also up and riding, a Frenchman from Hossigor. He's been surfing really strong. Went to the air yesterday, and he's a big lad, but he's still getting those turns in. So a really strong start from both surfers in the first few minutes of the heat. Always a good sign, Paul, when they get off to a strong start, that we're going to have some uh, fireworks. Yeah, heavyweight clash, you'd say, wouldn't you? Two of the biggest sort of chuckers of spray throughout the rounds. They've been hitting the lip harder than anyone, and they're just going to go, hopefully, just hammer on tongs. If we can get them enough waves, this is going to be really, really enjoyable to see. Basically, who can smash it harder? Yeah, that's all it's come, to come down to. Just a few of those lines starting to fill in. Due a little bit of a bump in swell this afternoon, potentially. See a few sets coming in now. Yeah, and if there's any extra juice, the amount of spray that these two surfers can throw uh, is, is enormous. But Kret had a great week. He was sort of down on 12th or 13th when he came coming into the rankings on the qualifying series. So he was, you know, he was in with a shot, but he needed a massive result. And that's what he's done under pressure. Um, you know, he's a good mate. He was in the last semi-final, Teva. They've been training and working together. But right now, we've got the new qualifying series European champion down there on the beach with Joanna Garnell. Yeah, guys, that's right. Marco, so not only you're in the final here at the Caparica Surf Fest, but you're also the European champion. How are you feeling? Um, I didn't even know I had to make this heat to become European champ. In the beginning of the week, I was surviving to go in the Challenger Series, and now I'm, I'm European regional champ. This is, I'm speechless right now, you know, but it's, it's been a, a lot of hard work, sacrifices and dedication, you know. I think when you, when you have a dream and you dedicate yourself and you're obsessed with the dream, you'll make it happen, you know, because 
it's all a matter of ne never giving up and, and this is for everybody. Whoever has a dream, just go out there. Don't don't waste your time on on doubting yourself. Just go for it. No matter what, you're gonna have a lot of mistakes, you're gonna fall down, there's gonna be lessons to be learned. But you know what? It's all worth it because you're following your heart, you're following your dream, and that's is, that's what it's all about in life. Nice motivational speech right there. What are you gonna bring for the final? I mean, you know what? Same thing, you know, just keep the momentum and uh, just maybe uh, hopefully the waves get any better. Maybe we serve that little wedge in the inside. I don't know. I don't, I don't know yet. I'm just trying to um, digest this right now. But uh, just taking one heat at a time. I'm really relaxed and I'm full of energy and it's been amazing, you know. So I just want to I just want to thank Jason for uh, being my coach and helping me through this event. Mario for training. Well, there's three really special people who, who've never given up in me. It's Miki Picon, Patrick Bevan, and my dad, who's been in my corner. No matter what, they believed in me, and I just want to thank you a lot for this. Well, go prepare. You have a final to get to. Thank you very much. Sorry, Paul. I'm just, I can put the tissues. I just got to get, you know, there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, emotional. You know, he's, he's worked so hard for where he's got, and he's got where he is. A question for you, mate, two-part question. Yep. Did you have a dream when, when, when you were young? And that's the first part of the question. Second part is, and, and, and what went wrong, Ben? What, what happened? I just didn't have people in my corner, like Marco clearly has. Okay. He had his dad, his, he had Patrick. If I had Patrick Bevan and Mickey Picon in my corner, imagine what I could have achieved. And there's a top turn from Becret. He's had some people in his corner, Dog Marsh a friend of ours, and he's been coaching him over the years. And I'll tell you what, Richard will be watching this, and he'll be happy with this. Bit of variety, bit of spice, hucks the fins forward and lands it. So Justin McCrack gets a 6.5 for that, and a 3.83 to back it up. So yeah, this swell is filling in, and he's going again. He's busy, Bacret, really confident at the moment. His boards look good. He's gonna go to the air, and his completion ratio on these airs, from today and yesterday, almost been 100%. And I would say that that has been part of his surfing that he needed to improve on. And by the looks of things, Paul, he's done that. Yeah, two hours he's doing as well. He's doing them early on in the waves. He's getting other turns after. He's not just throwing them away in the closeout section. He's actually getting them early on in his waves. So super confident the first turn is already building a bit of a platform with the previous one. And then another one straight away. You still haven't shared your dream, Ben. I live in my dream, mate. It's right now. I'm here. I'm okay. commentating the semi-final of the European, the final qualifying series. I'm with you. When you were a kid, I'm in Portugal. Okay. This is what I've always dreamed of. I just, I just, I didn't give up on it, Paul. I, ded I stayed dedicated to it, and I'm here. Yeah. What about you? What's your dream? Still got some? Yeah. Um, it's quite pertinent for this action, actually, um, because well, when I was a kid, I just always wanted to fly. Ben, I was just that was my thing, really. I yeah. um, wasn't really thinking about career or sort of fame or fortune. I just always really wanted to be able to fly. Well, Justin McGrath's flying. Yeah, well, that's, that was the point I was making. But um, yeah, it hasn't quite happened yet, but I'm not giving up hope. And then Vasco, a little double up out the back, a little wedge. And he's flying. Great shot there, as you see him fanging down the line. And we might see Vasco maybe go for an air here. That's the replay of this wave. It's a little double up, Paul. Yeah, a little runner for him. Look at the spring in his step. It's all coming down to this section and throws the air. Doesn't quite get it. And again, we'll just pick up live coverage of him. Also throwing another turn away. So I like the risk taken. He's pushing hard. He knows that Bucrate is going to try and boost or has boosted successfully twice to two of his scores. And Vasco wants a little piece of that as well. And you get these walls offering up all of that speed. There's no real onshore wind, but it's just light air. So there is a little bit of crumble in the lip. OK, that one, he just late to tagging it. So just sort of attacking a section and not quite getting it there. So a couple of missteps from him. Contrast that to every other heat we've seen him surf in this, where I don't think he's fallen off a wave up until this semi-final in this event. I think he's finished all of his ways and just smashed them for huge numbers. A little bit of a different start to the semi. Yeah, it can happen. It can happen. You can make one mistake. It can lead to another. And yeah, you're right. He's been so confident getting good scores off the bat. Justin Becret, meanwhile, has found his groove. And he's just got board speed, fanging down the line. Oh, that's a big ramp. And 
talk about his completion ratio. Well, it just suffered a dent in that statistic. I was wondering the first wave he actually had a proper ramp and well, it almost took him by surprise. And went for it, didn't spin it and didn't win it. So that won't count. But I'm liking the fact that there's lots of opportunities at the moment in this heat. First heat where we've seen consistent waves coming through, no real lulls, and they're all going for it. What went wrong here, Paul? Looks like his board did more of a rotation than he did. So it looks like his board went sort of three quarters of the way round. And he doesn't follow, and Chico picked up. Usually he's looking, he's turning his head over his left shoulder to get those landings. Chico mentioned that yesterday in his analysis. Doesn't really do that there. The body doesn't turn as much. As you can see, Az, that's Tava's dad, doing coaching detail, helping out Justin at this one. A groan there, as yeah. there's if it doesn't quite make it. Not there. ideal body language from the coach, <laughs> <laughs> really. Um, yeah, living it, though, absolutely every turn. And Justin Bicret. It's Vasco's mum, watching on. Yeah, she's always at all the events, always backs her son, passionate supporter. Always got his corner, and she'll know that he's capable of turning this around pretty quickly, the way he's been surfing uh, the last sort of two or three days. Had a up and down year by his own accounts in terms of competition. Hasn't had any results in all the other qualifying series and took a bit of time off. He's came back fresh. Uh, he's came back happy, so he's really happy with himself and he's been showing all week. But happy doesn't get your points, Paul, and right now he needs to just get back in the game. He's got that one 5.73, pretty strong actually. So not huge numbers needed. He'll know that he's got to um, maybe just stay a bit calm and wait for that, that, that best wave perhaps. Yeah, he's got plenty of time. I think he'll um, certainly be at the moment. Still wait for that right opportunity now. Just thinking about those runners that he's had. He's been favoring the rights. It's sort of wide on the bank, a little bit outside as well. He's, it's taken off a couple of double ups inside. That's because our tide's filling in. But those runners that move just off the bank with a good pace, he's just been smashing them. Look how close they're sitting together. I mean, there's literally they're the only two surfers for like a kilometre, and they're within like 20 millimetres of each other. Pekret doesn't have priority, but making sure he's right up in his opponent's grill. No real need to be that close. I, except for a psychological kind of battle, would you think, Paul? Or do you think it's definitely, a positioning thing? De definitely. I mean, it's physiological as well, isn't it? Because he really is that close. He's got the nose of his board quite close. Um, but, yeah, it's just getting right up in, literally, in this, your, op your opponent's grill. And just annoying them, basically. Just trying to get on the nerves. Just trying to, yeah. Just trying to make them maybe make a silly decision or make them just get their timing off or just rattle them in any way you can. See a lot of sports. Um, get a bit of chat, don't you, surfers, maybe? saying some unfavorable things to their opponents or surfers, other, other sports people in surf. You don't get so much of that. It's more about... Yeah, we need more of that, I reckon. Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd be all for it. But yeah, it's all about really surf just... Surf sledge. Yeah. More surf sledging. They don't even really say it off air or on air. I mean, they may have their own private conversations. Yeah, it's not general level of respect what, for what their kind opponents of things, in surfing. What, what kind of things would you say? Your board doesn't look very good, mate. Oh, yeah. How many fins you got in? Yeah, I'd do that. So, oh, your leg rope looks. I think I see the nick in the in your leg rope. I'd be like, oh, that wetsuit doesn't suit you. <laughs> <laughs> your bottom looks a bit bigger than that wetsuit. Stuff like that. Get kind of get personal, Paul. Justin, looking this way, and Vasco's going to go. So, he live action needs to get back in the game. First turn's crucial. Nice carve. Small way, but lots of spray. Another little cut back, just trying to finish off strong and hits it. Such pace. So, netting a 6.21. Don't know if it's going to be that, but he's definitely going to get closer. Absolutely going to improve it on 1.10. So, Vasco surfed it well. Probably just potentially marked down just the size of the wave. It was pretty small, but he surfed it really, really well. More sets approaching. He's going to try and get away from the crat. And we see this wave, Paul. Yeah, that's a smaller one, isn't it? I mean, he's pushing really, really hard. But see, he has to just do those double pumps 
just to get speed enough to do a maneuver. It's not really flowing them together as he was on the runners where he's going from one rail to the other. Just having to sort of scratch at the wave face a little bit. That's a nice turn. I mean, he buries almost the entire board on that opening jam off the rail and gets a little flick to finish. You, you know you're always going to get the speed with Vasco. You're always going to have the power. That sort of comes as standard. It's all about really how much of the wave he can use to do that. And on those smaller waves, yeah, he's pushing hard. Um, but he's just not quite had probably the kind of ways he imagined himself catching when he was setting out his preheat plan. Do you think it's a 6.21, which is what he needs to get into first? Be surprised. Yeah, we'll see those scores coming in. Just in the halfway mark, these two surfers battling out to join Marco Mignot in there. A 5.67, so it wasn't too far off. So really close, but enough. So he still needs that same score, a 6.21. Just, yeah, it's just the wave, wasn't it? Essentially, like the surfing was, was there, absolutely. Just the wave, a little bit lacking. And the fact that he has to pump into the manoeuvres each time just really costs you in terms of the overall visual impression that the wave makes. Yep, so the 13 minute mark, he's surfing well. That's really, really tight between these two surfers. 11.93 versus 11.4. We're going to have a short commercial break and come back with the rest of the last semi-final right after this. I got it right? Yeah. No way. And welcome back to the second semi-final of the Caprica Surf Fest. We're on finals day here in the southern shores of Lisbon. And we've got Justin Bacret and Vasco Ribeiro battling them out, trying to get to that all-important final. Bacret trying to get to that all-important on the break. Paul, he was up and riding. Yeah, and uh, just so loose with those punts, gathers it with the nose pick. The tail's super high again, and that seems to be a clear tactic from Justin. Vasco hitting it really hard in this exchange, coming pretty close to Bacret as he finishes off his wave. Two big, powerful turns, and a couple of numbers to drop in. Be interesting to see where that score goes for the air. Well, it has actually dropped in, Ben. Yeah, 5.4, so. Um, doesn't go into his total, and we'll get Vasquez to come in as well. Pretty impressive, Justin, as you said, he's a big lad. Sort of known for sort of charging. He's had some last sort of three, four weeks, just packing massive barrels at Gravier. He's, he's, he's good in Hawaii. Um, he's got a real big wave kind of streak in him, but he's showing that, especially in the last six months, I think, you know, in, the, when it, when, in these sort of marginal conditions, he's got that air game, he's got variety. I think he's really upped his sort of performance levels over the course of the last six months. Is it real noticeable? I think he's always had that, actually. Um, he just hasn't maybe had a chance to show it in, in some of these competitions. But I think, like, free surfing, that's definitely always been part of what he does, for sure. Um, and I guess that comes with confidence, right? And if you're, if you're feeling like you're under pressure for results or you feel like you maybe haven't performed where you, your goals and expectations were, you might just try and surf a little safer. Maybe, you know, try and get second place in four-man heats and... Just play it a little safer in general. I think with the added confidence, you know, he made a, a CT wildcard appearance a year ago. All of those kind of kudos and accolades come in your way. You can surf, you know, closer in heats to what you do when you're free surfing. Yeah, it's a good point. I think remember at the uh, see Mafalda Lobes getting ready for her final. And there's Paulina Day, the veteran. She's been here many, many times in her career. One step forward, one step back. What's Paulie need to do to get the best of Mafalda Lopes? 
Well, she's got to get better waves, <laughs> basically. I think the Falda has been really, um, just especially on her backhand, she's been like two turn combos that have been really big numbers. And I think if um, Pauline can, I don't think she can match her in terms of the power stakes. Speaking of power, Bash goes, yeah. So I don't, I don't think Pauline can match her in terms of spray or, or power. She's more about timing and finesse. And so I think basically to beat, to beat Mafalda, She's just going to get the better waves and try and, um, yeah, sort of work her way through multiple turns rather than single turns. And that's probably going to be her strategy. And not, it's very few people uh, are better at than doing that than Pauline. She knows her own game so well. She's doing it a long time. Doesn't get flustered. And uh, real clutch performer as well. I feel like we haven't really seen the best of her so far in this event. She's been getting fives and making it through heats with pretty low numbers. I feel like she's got a bit more to give us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I remember winning here maybe three or four years ago when she sort of won the final, like a 16, 17 point. The form point. of her life. Yeah, heat title. She was winning everything. And she hasn't shown that. And by her own admittance, she's did, had a few interviews saying, look, it's not, yeah, I got through it. I wasn't happy with my performance. Um, and so, yeah, you're right. If she's still got a bit left in the locker, she'll, um, she'll go in with a lot of confidence. Let's see people out in the break wall what what a view you get from that they've just moved this little this little shallow sandbar almost like a little wedge as these tides come in and Basco is going to have a go at this this is under priority and see if this is a mistake from Justin two turns so far from Basco another one and another one he's not done yet and he likes it and that could be just a little error from Bacray there talking about a talking about how he's sort of managed to improve that side of his surfing the last six months to like perform under pressure but massive error potentially Mass massive error ben let vasco go and um, by contrast from his last wave just look at the flow between the turns bang look how he comes out of it loads of speed again oh. massive hack and again just gathers himself tags it not done yet little clip and then up goes the arms. And I've mentioned it as well in this quarter heat, the speed that he kicks out with as well, Vasco. <laughs> He's absolutely flying over the water out here. Just the aggression from his body. He really had the chance to hit this. I wonder what there's no, Justin's thinking. There's, there's no way in the world that that wave should have been caught without priority. And it's the best wave of the heat that we've seen. It was, it was pretty clear from the way he took off that it was going to be a, a great one. And... Justin has just let his opponent get it. And that's the type of errors that cost you at this level of the sport. Semi-final, seven minutes to go. We'll see where the scores go, but you think it's going to be higher than a 6-2-1. It's probably going to get the lead. And Bacret will need to come back with just on six and a half minutes to go. He liked it. Vasky, you could tell he was he Didn't pumped. need asking twice, did he? He didn't need a written invitation I, to go I, that. I, it's like, want, oh, can I, you want me to go? I, Oh, Mike. Oh, yeah, I'll go. Oh, thanks, Justin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no worries, mate. And now, even now, Justin must have caught a wave. We'll see what he did. He's going to go to the air, you'd think. Did he pull it off? Goes big. Oh, he does or doesn't. So, lost priority. And just lost control of this heat pretty quickly. If he landed that, that was the biggest one we've probably seen in terms of amplitude. And it almost came good. They had a bit of a layback. I could hear those knees tweaking and buckling under the pressure. He just couldn't drag himself back up. And some numbers coming it's in a, for Vasco. A wild decision to forego a good-looking set wave and go for one of those racy ones where anything could happen. And it's a 7.27 for Vasco. And the Portuguese love that. Mafalda loves it. He's a crowd favourite here, Vasco, with very good reason. And under the pressure and just capitalised on a on an error from Justin and now trying to consolidate great surfing. Justin he needs a 6.51 though, not a huge number. And it's all go with five and a half minutes remaining. How do you wash that off, Paul? Bacret, he's made a mistake. You, you know, you obviously understand that, but it's about trying to just park that and getting on with it. Yeah, well, he basically... Or, or just wallowing in your own misery. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, you think about <laughs> it for a little approaches. while and let it sort of sink in. Um, yeah, it'd be annoyed. Um, it'd be really annoyed. Just sometimes you have to make these decisions in a split second. And he, he made the wrong one. Let Vasco Ribeiro go on a bomb who got the lead and also has priority, which he'll use here. 
Yeah, that little wedge is waves are great now. Oh, just a little bit hung up, and that meant you missed that second section. But now he's going to try and finish it off. Big air, not a big one. Never really had his mojo on that wave. So seeds the priority back to Justin. Justin now, well, he's got priority. He's got four minutes, and he's got a 6.5 requirement to get into the final, which would be his best result, I think, of his career. So he's close to the recap. It's been a good heat. There's been lots of waves ridden. It's been tight. And it's been, uh, you know, some really good surfing, Paul. Yeah, but Cray early on, on a smaller one. And just basically going to the turns at this stage. Just trying to hit it as hard as he can. And we thought it was going to be that kind of battle. Hasn't actually gone like that. He's gone to the air a lot. This guy, he's shown us a little bit of everything. But what he's shown us is just how dangerous he is at any moment. And you see, without much room to manoeuvre there, he gets a strong finish. That was the 5-7-3. This is the 6-5 from Bukret. To the flats, gets it done. Decent, but he needs actually a better number than that. This was the 5-3-4. So he just throws that one up and again, stomps the rotation, moves the front foot back, and a little clip. And at this stage, he's like, he had his mojo, he was catching a bunch of ways. And some reason he let Vasco Barra go this wave, who absolutely belted it relentlessly. He just foot on the foot to the floor the whole time, and it came in as a 7-2-7, the highest score of the heat. He knew it as well. As soon as he kicked out of that, he knew he was going to get a number, and he's got himself in the lead here. Yeah, exactly. And where would you put Justin Bacret in terms of the pantheon of bearded surfers? Is he is he right up there? Would would you have him? Mm, there's a, there's, you know, that category is is fairly stacked, Ben. It's ever expanding, but. Yeah, well, who, who, who are you going to rank one to three in terms of the bearded surfing pantheon? As we see, this is this wave, a little float up from Basco. And this wave just not allowing to open up, except that third one was good. Fourth one was solid, trying to improve on a 5.73. Not sure he'll do that. Wade Carmichael, I'd, I'd, I'd put up there in terms of in the bearded pantheon. I tell you what, you don't see a lot of. Is the goat? Is the goatee? Like yeah. Chico I hardly see any these days. He's been running that for a while. He's stuck to it. It's become like part of his brand. Yeah. To the point, if he turned up without it, you'd kind of be a little bit shocked and unsettled. How's, how's the release that Vasco's getting? He's just able to mix up his turns. He does that so well. Just going from one maneuver into the next, and each one, the slight variation in terms of exactly what his line is. At the top of the wave, really, really impressive. He's there he goes, at the top Bacret, of the game. trying to get back in it, fanging down the line. He's going to go to the air. You know he is. What's he got? Can he land it this time? That's massive, and it's an incomplete. We knew he was going for it. He got a lot of air, but we talked up, talked up his completion um, sort of percentage uh, at the start of the heat, but it's sort of just gone by the wayside under a bit of pressure, Paul. Yeah. In terms of your tactics for a heat, if that's how you get in your scores, is just pump him for speed and, and always go for the Hail Mary. It's good when it comes off, just feels a little bit more, you're throwing a little bit more down to chance. Obviously, that was the right manoeuvre to do on that wave and the situation that he's in, to go up the scale. But it's been a bit of a tactic for him. And the ones that he's landed, obviously, he's got his numbers. But if you just contrast that to finding the best waves, and doing big, big turns just feels your completion rate will inevitably be that bit higher. And essentially, that's what Scott Vasco, plus obviously that gift of the wave on priority, that's what's got him the lead in this. And he's well less than a minute away from the final, and he's got priority as well. Yeah, he's going to be. We talk about the proximity of being up in your grill. <laughs> now Vasco's going to give it back to him in spades. There's no way he's getting away from him. Justin will try and force. A wave, force turn. He's going to go left here, and this is another Hail Mary kind of situation. He's going to go his backside, and then just does the nose pick. It's a good turn, but it's not going to be enough. He, he knows it. So that's 30 seconds on the clock. Pretty much, yeah, he's almost gave the game away. So one mistake and one incredible sort of Era has turned this heat. Vasco absolutely nailed the, the, yeah, he got a gift and he made the most of it. But that's probably what the takeout for Justin when he talks to his coach about that heat, that's it's going to be that one little pivotal moment. And Vasco, he's through the final. It's good to have him back. The Portuguese 
fans will be super stoked going up against Marco Migno. And I, to be honest, two, you know, the two best surfers, I think, throughout the whole event are in the final, which I is love what we want. the contrast to Styles as well, the power, the speed, the aggression, explosivity of Ribeiro taking on the X Factor, the electric, the loose-limbed Marco Migno. Great final. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely stacked. Justin, incredible heat, incredible event, I should say. He's booked himself in the Challenger Series. So he's done more than he, what he set out to do at the start of the week. They are good mates. Look at that, Vasco, giving the young start a bit of a cuddle, saying, mate, you've got this. Good to see these guys look laugh, and Justin's got a smile on his face. He's, he's done his work for the week. He'll be wrapped. He's off to Snapper Rocks um, in, well, just a couple of weeks. So, look, he, he, his future is super bright. But that man, Vasco, too good, too strong, and he's in the final. There's the bracket. Mino Ribeiro, all important on that far right of your screen. And if we look at their kind of heat totals, I'd reckon, without doing the quick maths, that they've probably got the highest average heat totals throughout the, the whole week. So it's going to be the European, current Euro European champion up against a multiple European champion in the final of the Caprica Surf Fest 2023. So, yeah, it, it's looking good. Right now, though, we've got another final on our hands. Mafalda Lopes versus Paulinado, the women's final is coming up, 35 minutes for these two women to show their stuff. The waves are pumping, the sun is shining, the world is in a great place. We're gonna go a short commercial break and come back with the final of the women's right after this. It's the final heat of the entire season on the qualified series in Europe. We'll see Mafalda Lopes of Portugal take on Bully Addo of France. And it's all coming down to this, a 35 minute clock for these two surfers. Who's gonna take out the points and the prize money of this pair? We'll find out over the coming half hour or so. I'm Paul Levens, joined by Philip Jervis and Chico Alves. How are we feeling about this final matchup? How do you fancy the form of Mafalda to take on Pauline? Yeah, I'm going to be a biased Portuguese and, and go for Mafalda and for Vasco. <laughs> Chico? Well, I think uh, may the best men win. I and think. Women. Uh, and woman. And woman, yeah, in this case. But uh, yeah, we have been. Um, we had a, a huge week of waves, and uh, this is the final stage, so I want to see some action. Let's go hear from Vasco Ribeiro. Yeah, guys, congratulations, Vasco. You're in the final. Uh, you chose a different peak from the previous heats. Was that part of the strategy? You know what? Uh, I was going to surf the outside, but then me and Justin, before the heat, we kind of stayed next to the pier because we want the priority, and I was like, well, you know what? I'm just going to stay on, on the inside. So I changed the whole plan and, and they stayed with me. So and it, was, it was very interesting because, you know, Justin just, uh, is, is a really good friend of mine and he surfs really, really good. And he's one of those guys like me that really likes to keep the priority and start good. So I knew it was going to be hard. But yeah, I'm happy in the final. Now, one more. 
And he also took advantage of a little mistake that Justin uh, made there, giving you that uh, wave that put you in the lead. Do you see the potential in the wave? Not really, you know, because this, this pick is a bit different from the other one. It's kind of hard sometimes to see which one is a good one. But I was just, because I, I felt like every time I pedal next to him, he was, he was going on the first wave, and I knew the second one was good. So once I knew that, I kind of just played with that a little bit. And, and with that one, I didn't pedal, so he didn't really pay attention to the wave. And once the wave turned, I just turned around and went. So, you know, I think that's, that, that made the difference. And yeah, good. Now we're going to have a very interesting finals because it's been two of the most powerful surfers so far. Do you think you're going to have to change your strategy for the for the final? No, I don't think so. I think, you know, I just really want to surf. And Marco has been doing incredible surfing. I know him for a very long time. He's been he's been struggling a little bit to, on finding results, but I know his potential. I know how good he is. But you know, once you're in the final, you want to beat them. He's good. I'm I'm good too. And I just want to have fun and have a good, put on a good show for everyone. Well, we can't wait. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Ash Gobert taking on Marco Mignot in the men's final. That's in 29 minutes of time right now. Live action in the water. The French woman, Ado, with the better of the opening exchange. Got about a point. Well, exactly a point on it, actually. The 5-8-3 for Popo versus Mafalda Lopes with a 4-8-3. So the one-point split gives Ado already pretty decent platform. 5-8-3s decent way to start a heat for leap oh definitely it's um it's a fast way to start a heat a strong way to start a heat uh, but my father just that little one point behind but still definitely up there with her so we're gonna have wait and and see a, a bit more um, opportunities for the girls just think back to that men's final we just heard from vasco there have you been surprised at all by the sort of form he's been in chico in this event well not really i think vasco um He's really talented. Everyone knows that for uh, a decade now. I, I think it's just a question of uh, having opportunities in eats. I think they struggled a bit on the first few events in Europe in terms of uh, condition-wise. So I think on this event we had some really good waves. And every time you have good waves uh, on an event, uh, the best surfers kind of stand out. And I think he's one of them. So that's why he's in the final. As we see the replay, oh. big turn for Mafalda there. Uh, couldn't really reach the next section, but the first one was really powerful there. As we see the replay of Polinado too. Uh, a bit of a softer wave to start. Uh, nice wrap around, really smooth. Pauline likes to do things really smooth. Drifting the, the tail there a bit and, mm. and punch it again. So two different approaches. My father with one turn and uh, Pauline with a longer wave, but probably a bit smaller. So that's why we've seen this course um, Pretty close. Yeah. Yep. It's going to be interesting to see the backside attack versus the front side surfing. I think Mafalda will be surfing a lot more vertical and with a lot more power, and Pauline will be doing her very smart, very intelligent surfing. She rarely makes mistakes, and it's going to be interesting because this is Mafalda's first final in her life, and it's definitely not Pauline's first final. <laughs> so. Uh, we'll see how experience plays out on this one. She might make the final here a couple of years ago, no? Against Teresa? She won. No, she was Pauline won here before, and yeah. my father made the final. Final of oh, the final. final. Yeah, yeah. So. I think he, he, she almost won the event. Uh, it was like a windy left, high tide mm. kind of okay. final. Do you remember that one? Chico loves the high tide. Even if it wasn't, it's just going to throw that in. I think it was, it was a great day. I think it was high tide, so... Yeah. <laughs> I can see what you're doing there, mate. But yeah, no, but Felder, a great point you make there, Philippe. Um, I feel like she's surfing faster than Pauline. Yeah. And it's more radical, what mm -hmm. we've seen from her. She's she's had the bigger scores. They've been in, obviously, in different heats up until now, but she's been getting big numbers. Pauline's been stuck in the fives, essentially, all event, and just a little bit safe. So if Mafalda gets the chance to really attack, it could be danger. Here she is right now, looking yeah, loose. This, oh, this and there's an error. Mm, yeah, but uh, also Pauline just up and riding a little behind the section, and so a, a bit of a mistake for by both surfers. And Mafalda, she has been attacking those leaps on that backside attack. We're going to have a bit of a paddle battle here because they're really close to each other. And we'll see who gets to the to the priority first because it's really important. And I think by the look of this drone view, it's going to be uh, Pauline getting that priority. But yeah, yeah, she will for sure. 
getting herself into a final here to finish the season really strong. Taking on essentially one of the outstanding surfers of the next generation in Mafalda Lowe. It's probably about 10 year age gap between these two, just kind of like a generation, isn't it, in surfing and in a lot of sports, that sort of age group. And it's interesting, we talked about that before on the women's side, how Portugal's been so strong just with outstanding individual performance, but the, sort of the strength in depth as well, I think it's, it's been a feature on the women's tour. Three of our four finalists here today coming from Portugal. Mm -hmm. And you look at the European rankings and on the top 10 of women surfing, there's like five Portuguese surfers, which is really good. Uh, comparing to what we have on the men's side, because there's not a Portuguese on that top 10. Um, and there's not a Portuguese on the on the on the men's side on the challengers too. So uh, the girls just representing Portugal and representing and putting that flag up there. So good job. But Fred's Fred's on the challengers, right? Yeah, he is. He's going to yeah. be surfing there. Yeah, he's going to have an international white card by the WSL, and he's got a great chance to get himself back on the CT. Do you think this time last year he was surfing at Bells and heading to Margaret's? Feels like an awful long time ago, wouldn't it? That was just 12 months ago. And he'd love to get back there, take on the world's best surfers and compete on that tour. How you do that is by getting results in the challenges, which kicks off next month mm, we're in gonna Australia. My father's got a wave That's here. Gonna... Second priority under Pauline. Pauline doesn't like Whoa. it, but Fowler does, hammers it. Loads of speed. Whoa, and again, my God. massive backhand hits. That's... Falls on the third turn, but did good work before that. This is really good surfing. She just has been attacking those leaps throughout the whole week, but she found, somehow found that little corner, and Pauline wasn't interested at all, and that's got to be his best, her best wave. Two really strong turns. Yeah, let's watch the replay again. Winds up off the bottom, really towards the body. Oh, my goodness. And uh, she really puts some oh, pressure oh there God. again. So Look at the scores. Great wave by Mafalda. Massive A3. number in. She goes excellent. 8 3 3 for Mafalda Lopes. Pauline Addo had priority. Look at decided her watching. Not to take that wave. What's she thinking? Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes, and we saw that in, in last year, this is really good surfing. She's just, a, she has the torque on the bottom turn. She attacks that wow. wave. That was really good. Even though she fall on this one, the, the damage was already done. You know what? We saw some some movements like that uh, with Vasco. Uh, just then let Vasco going on, a, on, yeah. a, on the best wave of the heat. And sometimes, I'm not going to call it um, local knowledge, but they have been surfing this peak for a long time and and you know what and they see some opportunities that the other surfers don't see and yeah just <laughs> my father just got an 8.33 it's an easy decision to make if you don't have priority you're always going to go, go the way that the surfer doesn't yeah. so you, you can't really do anything wrong if they take it there's nothing you could have done anyway so if the, wood, the, if the wave is bad it's okay because you're going to keep going without the priority so yeah my father lopes as we were mentioning just that extra weaponry that she showed us leading up to this final, you know, we're thinking about her path to getting here and the scores she's been posting. That sort of surfing that she's been doing essentially all event. Mm -hmm. and that's exactly what we're just saying that Paulie's got to contend with. Of course, you've actually still got to do it in the final. You've still got to get two waves, catch the good waves, and then do that and make sure you finish your turns as well. She's halfway there because that is a huge number. Eight, three, three is really, really big. Paulie now needing a seven, three, four. And that's why Mafalda still sits on the backup of her opening wave, which is a 4.83. So good chance of improving on that. She gets the wave. So Pauline, a really important next wave for her. And she can't really afford to make any more errors in terms of her decision making with this priority. A little soft one goes through. She's zigzagging up and down at the top of the bank here around this double up. She's trying to work out exactly what she wants to be. But you, see, you know, you put Pauline on that last wave, a draining right hand, a real steep. She would have ripped that wave. She would have got herself a, a big number on that because it's just, just a beautiful looking wave. Yeah, but comparing the front side with the back side, these kind of conditions definitely, uh, they, they, they're, they're a little advantage from the backhand because you just attack vertically and because it's a perfect little wedge and sometimes on your forehand, you, you get caught up between doing a carve or a snap and in backside, you just have to put the board there and, and do just that couple of turns and you see the scores, 8.33. Chico, you're sitting in the lineup. You've got the lead in the heat, you've got priority. Wave comes through, you decide not to go your opponent. You just see massive spray, then you hear the eight red out. Oh, what, do you, what do you do? How do you, how do you stop from, from 
getting sort of negative energy. How do you keep it positive? How do you focus on the job? Well, I think that uh, situation you just uh, mentioned is probably the worst situation you can be on a yeah. It's not <laughs> using the priority into your advantage. Yeah. So Pauline might be feeling a bit um, frustrated to not have gone on that wave. But um, as Philippe said, sometimes uh, on this, especially in Costa, when this is this rip ball wave, mm -hmm. you can, sometimes you cannot really see the double ups. And uh, maybe she didn't saw something that Mafala saw, but Mafala was in a good position without priority. So what does Pauline do now? How does she how does she stay positive? How does she focus on getting the right wave? Well, I think she needs to put herself out there and really keep trying. Uh, I think uh, she needs to wait for the, the next flurry of waves that uh, come in and uh, try to match that uh, 833 from Mafalda and uh, come back on this one because it uh, uh, looks like now she needs a 734, but maybe just post I6 uh, will uh, help her cause a lot for uh, this final. So if Mafalda Lopes doesn't improve that much, uh, over 483, um, Pauline is completely in this heat still. So I think it's going to depend on um, the next flurry of uh, two sets and uh, wave gonna, choice. And wave choice, exactly. So my father there making sure that without priority she catches a really good one and uh, applies some pressure on Pauline because that wave looked really good. I think this is probably. Uh, one of the best uh, competitions I've seen from my father mm. and the way she's surfing. So a really good improvement by her over the last years. Yeah, actually, uh, Rodrigo's, which is my father's coach, we're gonna, I'll be right back on that. We're gonna see Pauline on a nice looking wave, Paul. Yeah, uses the priority, good opening turn from her. And again, another slash and hits it again. Good so a good answer from Pauline Addo as she goes multiple turns into the lip. You just can't help but make that inevitable comparison. It seems to be lacking a bit of speed and drive. It looks very soft, a little bit underpowered from Popo. Yeah, that's that's what I was about to say. There's a bit, a bit of a difference. You can see it's a well-surfed wave, obviously. It just goes up to, to bottom turn, straight into a snap, and then straight into the lip again. Nice carving. Uh, she's going to hit it, but a little bit a little bit too safe. Uh, you, if you compare the 833 where Mafalda just went really strong on two turns, you can see this, obviously, it's a well-ridden wave, but this, it lacks a little bit of commitment and power. Still very good surfing by, by Pauline. Chico, how do you like this wave from Pauline? Well, I think it was smooth. Um, the wave wasn't really powerful, so she just surfed through the rhythm of the wave, mm -hmm. and I think that's enjoyable when you're surfing Costa. Because you cannot really apply that much pressure because the wave don't allow you uh, to surf that way. I think my father's wave was was a bit different, was a bit more punchier, and she she had the the opportunity to really apply pressure, as the wave from uh, uh, Pauline was more like a a good read overall. So she didn't really bog any rail. So uh, was enjoyable. And uh, yep, six point five. Yeah, good number for Pauline, six five. So she brings her requirement down. As you mentioned, don't necessarily need to get it on your next wave. You get a high six, you bring the requirement down. That's exactly what happened, actually. So now it's down to a six, six, seven. And from under priority as well. So initially you think, all right, she doesn't have priority, that's bad. But actually, sometimes when you're chasing a score and it's a final and there's all that pressure, she can actually just loosen up a bit now. Oh, she yeah. can go hunting ways and just surf, basically. Yeah. And something she needs to do a little bit more of in this heat. Yeah, that's exactly what Mafalda did. <laughs> that's that's how she found that 8.33, because she didn't have priority, and just, as you said, she got a little bit loose, and you can actually scrap for waves and find opportunities on the lineup, and Mafalda, I know that she's going to wait for a bigger one now. Uh, as you as we look, she's looking at this one. She's going to idolize her priority. Nah, uh, Pauline looking at it, but decides not to go. It's... Yeah, the cold blooded. Well, to put herself in position to paddle for everything. So on the one hand, it's not going to play on her mind. Maybe that mistake is not that, that she could put that out of her mind just by having some physical energy and moving around. She can just keep paddling for anything. That's the plus side. The, the other side to that, I guess, is that makes time go quick as well. Oh, yeah. So when you're just hunting and you've got 15 minutes left and a couple of sets come, they're not the one, then all of a sudden you see the five minute warning come up. At the moment it is Mafalda Lopes 
with an excellent number in this and the lead in this heat. We've got just over 15 and a half minutes to go before we know who our women's champion is going to be at the Caparica Surf Fest. Join us for the rest of the women's final and the men's final coming at you live right after this. Welcome back to the women's final of the Caparica Surf Fest. Final heat of the season on our qualifying series tour. Pauline Addo's chasing down a number on a glassy looking wave. That one will run away. So Mafalda sticking with the priority at the back, waiting for a good opportunity. She decides this is it and she's going. Bang, big hammer again on the backhand. Smashes oh one right in Pauline's face. So another two good turns in combo. The Portuguese love it. Yeah, Rodrigo, our former coach, me and Chico actually uh, did a little bit of coaching. And I was I was saying that uh, um, uh, before the 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 the, the, the ah, before the um, the break. Uh, yeah, before the break. Sorry. And uh, Rodrigo was, was telling me that um, he thinks Mafalda is one of the. Um, most talented surfers you've ever coached because uh, she has some turns that he, he told me like it's diff very different with Kika Kika is one of the best surfers but Mafalda is really talented look at this chic oh, yeah first this? snap oh. huge snap off the top and another one so, so I good. love how she didn't rush a yeah. third turn in and she knew the work was done but oh. this turn in the pocket looks like it's going to suit her surfing in, um, in the Gold Coast I think Looks like snapper to me, the, the, that double uh, backhand uh, approach. Uh, and I think she's going to put another big score Huge on the board. Huge number in, eight points. So two excellent scores in the final for Mafalda Lopes. The crowd are absolutely loving it. She deserves it as well. She's just hitting the lips so hard. The timing is really, really good. So waiting with priority for six or seven minutes, identifying the opportunity. It was the right one. Just prior to that, Pauline just raced across an in-between wave that shut down. Mafalda waited for a bit of quality, and she showed us more of that quality. And what a heat total. 16-3-3 in a final. That's really good. She has been choosing the, ra the waves very well. She know what kind of waves um, it's are the advantage on your backhand. And she's uh, catching exactly the, the right waves you want to surf on your backhand. Those little peaky wedges with a, with a bit of a wall that allows you to go to go for a two turn combo. Two really strong uh, combo. She, they were really similar, the, the waves actually. Um, it, it was interesting to see that this wave was a little, sh a little uh, the score was a little shorter than the rest, as we see here, Kika and Yolanda su supporting the Portuguese flag. Yeah, they both look really stylish to me. Nice sunglasses to protect their uh, eyes from the sand, Paul. Uh, and Yolanda yeah, I think that's what sunglasses swag. are for, mate. Yep, well done. Yeah. Thanks. That was a good one. Nice I just love to um, point really the obvious. Sometimes you need to, right? <laughs> um, I'll tell you what's what's happening here. It's a great looking wave on the outside. Addo with priority. Mafalda might get the first one. Look at this little double up for her. It looks so fun. Just buttery as that one just folds on the bank and she unleashes a first turn. Bang. There's another great hit, pokes the nose and then just forces her way through. Ah. Pushing hard again. If it's not higher than an eight, it won't go in her top two, which is the incredible thing to, be able to say about someone when they're in a final. From their point of view, she's got a huge total on the board. 
don't know if Pauline went went the wave as well. So with priority, maybe she was looking for the second one there. Doesn't look like she's taken it. Nope, she's still there with priority. She's got a uh, sizely requirement on her hand. She needs to go basically close to a perfect 10, 9, 8, 3, or otherwise a couple of eights will do it. She get two new waves. And now I think we have uh, Joana Garnel with Kika Vazelko on the beach. Let's hear from Kika supporting uh, Mafalda Lopes in this final. Yeah, guys, that's right, Kika. I mean, no hard feelings. You just lost against Mafalda in the semifinals, but right now you're on the beach supporting her. How is she doing so far? Yeah, she's ripping. Um, it's actually impressive. Every time she serves in Caparica, she, she always rips. And last year or two years ago, she even made the final against Teresa. So I'm really happy for her, even though I lost. And at least she's winning. <laughs> and what are your plans now for the, for the next events? I'm just going to keep pushing, training every day, and we'll have the Portuguese National Contest de Liga Mel soon, and that'll be an extra practice, and then I'll go straight to Australia after. And now if Mafalda wins, are you going to go pick her up there on the, on the, on the, in the water? Of course. She's one of my best friends, and we, if, when we're competing, um, of course, I want to win, but we're really good friends, and I'll be here supporting every time for sure. Well, thanks for your support, Kika. Good job. Thank you. Thanks, Joanna. Fowler Lopes, so far, very good. In fact, so far, excellent. That's what her numbers are, both of them. That's what her total is. 16, 3, 3 out of 20. Massive numbers to post. The backhand weaponry it has been so sharp throughout this event. And it's all very good. Standing out in the rounds and posting the big numbers and getting highlights and straight glissy wave of the day and heat of the day. But it's another thing to come back on finals there. It's kind of almost got to start again from scratch got those things in the back of your mind, but still have to perform. Don't want to peak too early. And that's exactly what fowler has been able to do. And a big statement performance. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, uh, Kika said something about um, uh, Mafalda surfing really good here in Costa. And Vasco told me exactly the same thing yesterday. Like, it feels like she outdone she herself here for some reason, maybe because she connects with the ocean and connects with the wave. She's from here, she grew up here, and maybe that has a little bit of a, um, a playing part here on these kind of waves, because it feels like she outdones herself. Yeah, I mean, it's been a, a theme, isn't it, throughout sort of surf contests as far back as they go, essentially, that surfing at your home break just gives you something extra. I think she lives in Lisbon, but she surfs here a lot okay, because okay. her best friends are from here, Miguel Mats and uh, Martin Paulino are from the same group and I think they serve together quite a lot here, but she lives in um, in Lisbon. Do you outdone yourself surfing Costa de Caparica, she? All the time, mate. <laughs> All the time. I saw it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... You were uh, ripping. There's uh, an extra spice in the water. I just feel warm. Even though the water is cold, I feel warm. And um, yeah, it's just, I just feel like Costa is a really playful wave yeah, and really is. fun. Uh, overall, it's a great place to have a contest. And uh, yeah, this week showed uh, really good things to us. As you see Marco Mignon talking a bit, uh, gaining speed down the line in this occasion and really visualizing visualizing what he's going to do in the final. That was an air. That was a full rotation. Did he it make was. it? Did he make that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't look to... like he made it. I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't too convinced, was I'm it? I'm not sure if he rode out of that. <laughs> yeah. It, two, it, judges, it, two judges said yes, the other said no. I don't know. I saw I saw the pump down the line. It was great. The, I don't, I, the rotation was kind of slow, though. We have to watch the replay. We need to watch the replay if he, if, to see if it's a, a make or a no make. But um, I think he was kind of like visualizing yeah. what he's going to do on the wave. Oh, is that okay? That's that what he was doing. Okay, cool. Pointing the obvious for the second uh, time. Uh, yeah, yeah, good job, Sheik. Was he visualizing then? But look, he, he can be doing that and not visualizing surfing, <laughs> thinking about like plants dancing oh, yeah you know <laughs> so i'm not pointing the obvious we can ask him what was going through his mind when he was gaining speed on the sand <laughs> and throwing airs on the sand as you see vasco different approach is not visualizing anything it just wants to get just wants to get there and, and as you see dr that. dr on the head david raimond dr dr as you see dr doctor dr raimondo as you see, his coach. Yeah. 
Yeah, he said, um, let's keep focus with the surfing you've been doing over the last week. If you do three big turns, uh, you're going to get eight. So mm -hmm. just keep it simple, buddy. Keep it simple. Uh, I love a good pep talk. We had one on the beach yesterday, Paul. <laughs> uh, ben was the, one, the owner of the pep talk. Dropping the knee. <laughs> was really helpful for us. So I think for them, it is too. Yeah, but the, the unusual thing about that is he was the one that needed the pep talk the most <laughs> based on performance, wasn't he? That was almost for his benefit, Mark, because we were going all right, but he was really struggling. And he felt the need just to he was really close, struggling. The, close the circle and give I a little bit of a better toe. <laughs> That's one of a combination of factors, I would say. Last five minutes of the final here. Addo still chasing a high oh, nine. That's, that's got to be a good one. Oh, yeah. look at this wave. Here goes Paul in Edo looking for 983 or looking for two scores, a couple of eights. Bang, wow. great first turn from Popo. Wow. Again, a big slice. She wants a third one. It doesn't come. So just doesn't get that mid part of the wave, the end that she would have liked for. The first turn was great. A little bit of a variety in there, just dropping the wallet on that second one. Uh, leaving the, the, the right arm behind, uh, just trying to push a little harder on those turns, just to make sure she can get closer to that eight points. Well, I, I don't think she will improve. Um, I think that last turn wasn't really effective. I like this first one, a bit more aggressive, but this one, I don't know, she went for, she was in between two turns, mm -hmm. the blow tail or reverse or a layback or a big hit of the top. And I don't know, I think she got caught in between, in between two turns, yeah. so I don't think it, she's, she's going to um, improve on her situation. That's a good turn, though, technically. The first one was yeah. the, the, a, a lot more power, but this one, she wanted to go for the layback mm -hmm. or just for the blow tail at the end there, and she got in between turns, so um, a bit of a mistake there for Pauline, but really hard hit for her uh, anyway, because my father has been, uh, since the start, on fire. And um, well, when you get someone on fire on your eat, on your eat, posting eights, you, you've got to be really strong to turn it around. Uh, we uh, we don't see many surfers turning um, eats around with such uh, high scores, right? Let's check the recap for our women's final with just about three minutes remaining, and Pauline Addo having a swing early on. Yeah, she started off pretty well. A couple of really nice um, turns. The wave just kept on providing. She got some really long waves as well. But this girl got the best waves and did some of the best turns of the contest. Look at that, the combination of backside turns. It's really sharp, really strong. Even though she fell here, it's not a problem. And you, we're gonna see the second wave of Mafalda very similar to that one, and this is Pauline second to best wave, a 6.5. Again, not as a steep of a wall, but very long wave. A lot of connection in between those turns. And this girl, the second. Look at the steep wall on that one. Strong hit. Straight into another one, right at Pauline's face. Very good surfing by Mafalda Lopez. She's got to be really happy with two minutes remaining. And Pauline pretty much needs a 10 point ride. So it's not going to be easy. Yeah. Priority as well will be with Mafalda Lopes, of course, now. And she can control this. And barring something really quite miraculous, she's going to be crowned a champion here on Easter Saturday. Really has been an incredible week of surfing. In terms of the conditions we've had, we've never really seen this spot this good for this many days. It's a little smaller today, <laughs> sure, but we've had waves in five even six foot range we had big barrels go down as well oh, yeah exactly Thinking of barnaby cox got himself a big tube so and, did and the israeli sassy surfy as well yeah on the back sassy. end sassy been really really impressive offshores throughout the day glassy conditions in the afternoon or even if the wind came up a touch as it did yesterday it just turned into perfect for airs and we were able to run in low tide and high tide mm -hmm. super consistent it was not that good on the high tide, but we still ran it. What? <laughs> Did he actually understood that was better on the low tide after all? Well, since the swell dropped a little, it's better on the low tide. You have to admit that this is not high tide. This is mid tide. It's not high tide. It's fine, obviously, but it's not high tide. Are we too. having a discussion live? 
with 48 seconds to go of <laughs> the one final. It's not a high tide. Lopez will just cover Pauline Addo, who's desperate, just to try and find something. But she's not going to. She's not going to get a 10 in the last 30 seconds of this, and she doesn't have priority. But hang on, maybe we'll see a little more surfing just to finish this off as we see. A pick set stand up outside. It's going to take a little while to actually roll in from there. Just keep an eye on that clock. 20 seconds. Let's see if Mafalda decides to use her priority and go this first one. Not sure if the second one will get there in time, actually. She's Mafalda will go here. And she'll use priority. Oh, that's a if she can get on this way, but she can't. It'll just slip underneath. So Pauline might have a shot at a wave here. Oh, look at this. Here she goes. So standing up, here goes Pauline Addo. Beautiful wave. Wow. Great first turn from Pauline. An incredible beginning to that wave. Just doesn't quite run down the line enough to go close to the perfect score that she required. But nevertheless, got himself a wave at the end and had a swing. Hmm. But it'll be congratulations to that woman, Mafalda Lopez. She's your champion of the Caparica Surf Fest 2023. She's made a final here before. She had to watch her friend, Teresa Bonvolo, get the win that day. This time, it's all about her, and she's a very worthy champion, Phil. Yeah, and Mafalda's family right there, just clapping on the beach. Everyone's gotta be happy. I'm, I'm pretty sure all, all the kids from their group are gonna make a huge, huge party on the beach because they, they're, they're such a tight group. They are so 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 friendly with each other. And just as we saw Kika, uh, she was right there. She lost to Mafalda, but she was still right there to to um, to support her. So it's she's got to be happy with that one. Because not only wasn't a good hit, she served one of their one of the best hits of her life on a final. That's got to be, that's got to make you happy. Winning a QS is always going to be a great moment, right? Mm -hmm. You win any event, you, you pick it up. But Obviously, the like trophy, that, the yeah. points, the money, that that's going to be something you cherish forever. That's, you know, you look back in your career, mm -hmm. these will be the days, the moments you remember. But doing it with eight yeah. and doing it consistently throughout that's the event, so just good. in the final, she's been doing that every round. Been posting amazing scores, just brilliant surfing. And to come back and win a final like that, if you won it with a couple of threes, you'd be stoked. Obviously. You win it, with a, win it with a couple of eights. Yeah, that's got to be the best feeling ever. Just perform on the final and make sure the, your opponent has no, not even a chance. That's got to feel even better. Uh, I think she hasn't, like, she's happy, obviously, but I, I don't think it filled in already yet. As soon as she hits the sand and, and she hits the beach and she's going to be congratulated by all of her friends and family because you know what? She's at home. Everyone is here to support her. That's got to be the best feeling in the world, Paul. Yeah, she's absolutely delighted. Big noise on the beach as well from her squad. Is that really just savor this moment? Yeah. Been so close to home and having that support network as well. Whether you win or lose, it's always good to have loved ones around. But when it's victory, it just increases even more. And she will be absolutely loving these moments here. What a place to get your first win on the qualified series tour. Really yeah, cool moments of, here from Mafalda Lopez. Yeah, one of our best friends, Miguel Mach. They're so happy. It's that, That's got to be, everyone feels this win, you know? It's just not Mafalda, because I think Everyone knows how good she is. Everyone knows she's been deserving a result like this for a long time. This is her mother. Very cool family, very nice people. Um, Miguel just congratulated her be before anyone else. And yeah, she's gonna be carried on, on, on someone's shoulders, that's for sure. But yeah, big hug from Rodrigo right now. She's crying. Oh. That's got to feel good, Paul. Just letting it all sink in now. She's the champion. She'll get chaired up the beach in Costa de Caparica. We'll hear from her shortly as well. But she's been great value for that win. And you think about all the hard work that goes in as well and all the training and that kind of stuff. It's for moments like these that keep surface motivated and also help to define your career. And once you get that winning feeling, something that surfers like her like to keep going and she'll get a taste for winning with this and i expect to see her in many more finals with many more victories as well 
She's an incredible surfer. We talked about that generational shift from the younger crew on the women's side coming out of Portugal. So much talent there. And she's one of the leading lights of that generation. It's so good. She, that, that puts your uh, confidence just up there. She's going to be going for the rest of the year, no matter what contest it is, just knowing that she has that victory and knowing that she was able and to perform like she did. Because sometimes, as you said, it's always good to win, but when you perform like that, you got to be even happier, I think. We're going to go on an interview soon, so it's going to be... It's going to be interesting to see. Let's go talk to the champ. Yeah, champ, how are you feeling? Finally, you've already made a final here at Caparica, but to do it again in your hometown and get the win, tell me all about it. <laughs> Not really happy. <laughs> I was really needing this victory, and I just want to thank everyone. <laughs> I can't talk. <laughs> no words to describe this feeling. What's coming up next now for you? <laughs> I don't know. I hope I can compete in the challengers and yeah, try to show my surf there. Well, go celebrate with all your friends and family. Congratulations. Caparica Surf Fest winner right here. <laughs> Thank you. Great job, Bafalda. We'll hear from her later when we get the presentation, when it all sinks in. But she's emotional right now. Well, she should be a well-deserved victory, a cuddle from mum. Life doesn't get much better than this. Nah, not really. Full pack, bitch. We come back with the men's final. 35 minutes to see who's going to be our men's champion to wrap up the season, our final heat of the year. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Capo Rica Surf Fest. It's the final heat of the entire season, the men's final live from Costa de Capo Rica, Portugal. We'll, we'll check out Marco Mignot of France taking on Vasco Ribeiro of Portugal. Obviously, two of the outstanding surfers of this event thus far. A real contrast in styles, techniques, and approach. Both of them highly entertaining. And this was a first effort early on from Marco Mignot. Oh. That's a really good first turn, straight into another one, and another huge turn. So three big turns, that's exactly how you want to start off a hit. Yeah, seven, seven point points. ride. Wow, Marco, he's been so, so loose. And gets another one here. He's been doing this all throughout the event, actually really busy, just getting lots of waves, wave count up, huge. And straight off the bat, a seven point run. Got a 10 point heat title within the first three minutes. So <laughs> that's great. amazing. It's a great start. <laughs> what kind of thing are we going to expect from Vasco here? More of the same? It's been a winning formula so far for him. Why change it? Yeah, he's going to he's gonna probably choose the right waves and, and find that little corners like Mafaldo just did, because we know that that's a scoring potential. But Marco, just starting off the heat, Vasco, he kind of got the inside uh, uh, positioning on Vasco on that first exchange. and. Uh, he got a seven points. That's a really good, uh, really good way to start off the heat. But Vasco won. Yeah, it won't back down. That's for sure. Vasco Ribeiro hailing from just across the water here. If he looks to his right, maybe with some binoculars, he could probably see home. Mm, that's true. 
Uh, right now, he's looking at getting a win on the qualifying series for 2023. If he's going to do that, he needs to get past Barca Minho, who's the European champion. He's won the QS in his region. He'll take that with him to the Challenger Series. And he's not wasting any time at the start of this. And look at that. That's a real concerted battle effort for him just to stand up and then pop straight out. So definitely just looking to stay busy out here. He's fired up for this. He's going to need to bring that energy. He's going to need to show his best surfing. He's taking on Vasco. Here he goes, though. That's really nice. And again, wow. From no backswing goes into a big radical turn in the lip and then blows the tail out and almost gets the reverse stunt. Aparicio, his coach, who's been really enjoying what he's seen. He's one of the loudest voices on the beach cheering. He he's really feels it. it, it it's, I mean, it's like he got the uh, European Championship trophy. <laughs> he's been in his corner, working really hard together. And the emotion, actually, in both, we had the European Champions crowned at, at this event, which this way we thought that Oof. person was good. And there was a little rant there and usually eats that up for breakfast, but just couldn't make it. Yeah, we had, saw Yolanda Hopkins get her trophy, and then we saw Marco get his today. And in both occasions, it just meant a lot to them. It, um, it really did. You could see how much work and effort. The job's not done, but they'll always have that accolade. And he's just, well, he's not mixing up his strategy. He's just, he's going everything you can see. That's the thing about not having priority on a, on a hit like Vasco. You just want to put pressure on him just to make sure he gets a little bit on the, in his head. Uh, but he, Vasco is a fierce competitor, so it's he's not he's not even paying attention to to Marco Fusmino. A bit like poking the bear, right? Just the, you know, <laughs> yeah, the bear sometimes, is just sitting sometimes there. Sometimes it's even worse, you're isn't poking it? Poking yeah. him, and he's like, whatever. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> what's he gonna do? He's attack, probably. That's true. That's Let's a, see yeah, that's what he does. Really interested to see his first wave in this. Mm. I got a feeling there's gonna be some fireworks. Here goes Mino, still with the scatter gun, to catching everything. And a nice turn, and again, that board looks so loose for him. Just slashing, releasing the tail. <laughs> All right, here goes Vasco right behind him, ripping the top off one. A little bit of a smaller face. Just releasing that tail at the end of his turn. There's that vicious snap that he does so well. Just belting spray on what is a smaller wave, but... He oh seems to be God. delivering yeah. all of the energy and a little look up as well when as he mixes it up for the final turn. Really enjoyable exchange. Yeah, and I think we may have missed the first turn. And if, he, if, if that's the way he finished, so I can't wait to see the way he started. And Vasco Ribeiro, he's in form. You can tell he's got his mojo. And this first turn, we'll see what it goes. Comes around the corner. Just a bit of a check turn here in this one. Ha! So... The amount of spray, Jervis, he's, even on these little waves, little turns like this one here, so much spray on these small little waves. That one there, I meant, and he's just got so much speed. So the bear, well, you <laughs> oh stick, you, stick a, a, you, know, you sharpen a stick, you put it through the cage and you prod him, that's what he does. Yeah, Vasco is ruthless. If you give him a little bit of an opportunity, he's going to smash it. But this way for Marco, also really, really good. Uh, some really nice snaps, just drifting those style for three times in a row and then finish it off with a bit of a foam climb, a bit of a climb. He liked it, but he just looked back and saw Vasco absolutely shredding the wave before, the wave after. I think it's going to be interesting to see how the judges will play out this one because Vasco's wave was not as steep as Marcos Mino's wave, but still a lot of power, a lot of momentum. It's just that board doesn't doesn't stop, does it? And yeah, just, it's, you're right. They do different pace of waves, yeah. weren't they? And how they differentiate, it's going to be interesting. Marco had three or four waves. Well, speaking of something about coaches, I'll tell you what knows a thing or two is Vasco Ribeiro's coach and down there with Joanna Garnell. Yeah, that's right. David, you look really calm. What's happening? I'm always calm because uh, I have a huge confidence in Vasco at this stage. He's been doing a, an excellent event. Every hit is match all the waves that he gets, getting good scores, don't making any mistake on the prior. So 35 minutes, the strategy was to wait for the bigger ones and smash it. There's no pressure because even if you won this event, you will not qualify for the Challenger Series. So this is an event to, to show the world that he's back and he's back stronger than ever. Good way to put things. How has Vashka been outside the competition? 
pretty relaxed as well? Yeah, pretty relaxed, enjoying the surf, happy, listening to his music, taking his time, and he's really confident. And when he's confident, it's really dangerous. He was saying that he wanted to have fun, and blondes do have more fun, right? Yeah, always. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you so much. Yeah, great stuff. Thanks, Joanna. As we'll watch vision of Marco Mino paddling back out after tearing away. But the judges have got a bit of scribbling to do here. Yeah, I mean, some big numbers coming in, and Vasquez Cage, he, he, he must have just had like a dressing gown on, just come out of the sauna, having a cigar. He was that relaxed and cool. Not why he's, he's got so much confidence in his, yeah. his charge, and there's big numbers coming in because Marco got a 717, Vasquez responded, and then there was another wave from Marco, and that looked two turn combo. I think that's going to be big as well. We've got a great final coming here, guys. Yeah, look at this wave. Just one of those corners that Mafalda was getting. Just keep on providing that wall. Look at that. Just a combination of two really, really strong and powerful turns, with a big, a little bit of, a little bit of a variety in those. Like wham, and then here is going to drift those tail, that tail a little more. Just putting a lot more pressure, and that was definitely a good wave. As we see, first quarter of Vasco 707. But this guy. Is, has been on a tear lately in this two turn combination. Look at that, just that's pushing. the best way of the heat, do you reckon, guys? I reckon that's going to be potentially right up there. I'll tell you what, shout out to Hugo Pinera, the Connors director. He's absolutely rinsed it again. He's this this it is the again, best kind of the smallest waves, probably the best conditions of the whole event. That's saying something. He's going again. Whoa, Mino, what's he got for us here? Oh. Look at that beautiful turn. Wow, he's just absolutely smashing this apart. Oh my goodness. Just mixing it up. Oh, and I can't wait to see the claim smoke. on this. What claims are you going to give us? He's going to give us something up. special, surely. <laughs> While oh. he's surfing that way, this previous number drops in as an 823. Prior to that, he got a 717. Vasco dropped a 7, so already on 15.4. And he's got another number to come in here. Absolutely incredible surfing from Marco Mignot. Yeah, his strategy is paying, is paying off, isn't it? Look, he's just found, finding those insiders. Just just keep on getting some steep walls and look at that. Just three very similar turns, but still very powerful, very good. And you know what? I think the strategy is the, the, it's paying off. Just well, yeah, the strategy to get eights and nines. Yeah, no, yeah. just going for everything. Yeah. Look, Vasco is waiting. He had the priority, and then out of nowhere, this wave just kept on providing, and Vasco didn't even look at it. So, it's, oh, that thing's sick. Three, three, oh. top of the leap turns. That's exactly what you want. It's just because you don't want to go for a cutback. You want to hit the leap. That's and, full beast mode right there. He's pushing basically as hard as you can. And with the speed as well, if your timing's good, you're going to go right up in the range. Aparicio <laughs> absolutely loves it. Massive numbers dropping in on our score screen. We're just waiting for one judge. It's a nine. Comes in as a nine-point ride for Marco Minio. And somehow, Vasco Ribeiro is in all sorts of trouble here in the final. Yeah, it needs a combination of waves. <laughs> Even here, he still has a 7 0 seven, Look, but... His last three waves, 7 one seven, eight, two, three, and a 9. Under I don't know where he's going to go next. Under priority. Mm -hmm. So Mino <laughs> has just been absolutely tearing. It's going to be very interesting to see how Vasco can get, him, get, him, get out of this. Goanna is with Appers. Yeah, guys, I'm trying to get... Let's wait a little bit to get composed, right? You breathing? Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, wow, just amazing. The gods are with us. <laughs> Everything is, he, st he started like a beauty and finishing like a beauty. I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, it's amazing. Just European the, champion as well, right? European champ, wow. Do you think that gave him the boost? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Because I didn't tell him. Rob told me last night that if, if he made that heat, he was going to be European champ. So I didn't say anything. That's why I ran down to the beach and he was like, he didn't believe me. He was like, oh, no, I'm like, I'm telling you. But yeah, so he did it and now he's just, that's the Marco, that's Marco there. That's the real Marco. What was the strategy for this uh, final? Uh, nothing. Go out there and just show his boss in the air and God gave you wings and I'll fly. And that's what he's doing. <laughs> well, good luck. Thank you. All right, excuse me. <laughs> All right, here he goes again. Great stuff with Marco's coach, Jason Aparicio, as he turns a beady eye out to see to watch this. Oh my and it's a continuation oh my of a similar theme of just absolute ripping. Yeah. 
from Marco. It's finished, it's finished. He's just... Come in, let's go, let's have a beer. <laughs> He's just absolutely on a tear here, dropping eights and nines, a couple of sevens that are throwaways. And he just hasn't really put a foot wrong. That busy approach, that was a ninth wave for him, so that clear strategy, but how do you deal with someone when they're in this kind of form? You can't really. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, that's a really good combination. I don't think he's going to improve his score because it's an insider. And, and, and Jason was saying, come in, it's done. You know what? That's Vasco Ribeiro out there. He's, you're not 100% safe. Obviously, uh, he needs a combination of two waves, but there's still 20 minutes remaining, guys. And, you know, if there's someone in the world that can actually turn the heat around, I know that's Vasco. Uh, it just needs to, to catch those waves and, and make sure that Marco doesn't get it, doesn't get any better than that nine and eight point two three, which is it's, it's, it's all he's he's the he's star of the show, isn't he? He's, 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 he's my new, he loves favorite, it. Big new, new favorite human. <laughs> yeah, we didn't, didn't we saw David, the coach of mm -hmm. Vasco, was, was playing it cool when he had the open shirt and the <laughs> chain. He looked very relaxed. He looked a bit like a man who's you've had a big night. You get up late, it's already hot. You just have a shower and you've got an, another lunch. You've got another kind of fun day lined up. And it's like quarter to 12, you just kind of stroll in like the one block to the <laughs> venue and you, you know you're not far away from your first drink. He looks a bit like that. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, but he's a, he's a family guy. He's a family that, man. Does that just mean that has that kind of feeling? I know, I know. The feed, I, I, we know that me and Chico know the feed for like 15 years. So we know that how it is, but he's always a super calm guy. and. He likes to be on the beach and just, he, he, he needs to, especially with Vasco, he needs to uh, show them that how calm he is, because we see Vasco is gonna, that's... that's Looking to get out of combo, Vasco Ribeiro here, 17.23 is the number he's after, a nine and an eight. We'll get him out, but he needs two ways. Here he goes, ripping down the line. It is a bit of a smaller wave, it's a good turn on the end. Let's see where that can go towards his total. Mark I mean, just threw away a 7 0 3. Doesn't need it. Doesn't even go close to his top two. And Vasco making the decision to go on this wave. Did you like the decision to take this wave first of all, Philippe? Yeah, we can see the difference between uh, uh, Vasco's waves and, and Marco's wave. You can see he's not as steep as uh, uh, Marco's, but still very good surfing by Vasco. Just finishing turn, drifting that tail. But yeah, it, it looks like he needs those ones that uh, they break a little closer to the pier because they have that big wall and we can uh, we know Vasco gets a, a wall and how dangerous he is because this wave it was good it was not as good as he wanted to but still very good surfing by Vasco he's going to improve in his situation maybe get out of that combination uh, who knows and yeah he's got to do the same thing that Marco did he doesn't have priority now he just goes on whatever and maybe find one of those steeper walls yeah the difference in that steepness means that you know, Vasco was pumping in between his mm -hmm. turns, wasn't he? Not, not by virtue of surfing, just because the wave um, meant he had to chase it. Whereas, um, yeah, Marco was just allowing himself to go straight off the bottom, straight yeah. to the next turn, back down, bang. So that's just going to affect the, the scoring. It was really well surfed. You have to go out there and get, get those really steep sections. Because once Vasco starts hooking into those same mm -hmm. easy sections, it's going to be game on. But he needs, he, needs, um, he needs a couple of those in a row. 17 minutes and 40 seconds remaining in our final, remaining in our season on the qualifying series. We've got our champs locked in. We know who's going to the Challenger Series as well. All of those talking points in the Australia Galicia post show will be breaking all down for you with exactly who's going to the Challenger Series and how all of that's going to play out. But a great conclusion to the season this event has been with really, really fun ways throughout, which hasn't been something we can say that much in the last calendar year on the QS in Europe, struggled a bit for a variety of reasons. It's great to bring it home with one for the books, really. It's been a really fun event in terms of surf. Judges taking their time with this number for Vasco. If it's a 7 2 3 or higher, we'll get out of the combo. Yeah, because he, he the probably is. He, as Ben said, he, he couldn't even, he couldn't actually go top to bottom. He always had to surf a little bit more horizontal. And the judges really love to see this, the surfers attacked vertically. And that's exactly what Marco has been doing. And 
Vasco gets it. 7.13 is not enough to get out of that combination situation, but still a very, very good score, 14.20. But he's up against one of the most informed surfers on the last couple of days. Marco just absolutely tearing. And that, yeah, non-stop action from him. And now he just plays cool as a priority and he's going to make sure Vasco doesn't get any wave. Yeah, it's about time. I mean, we can all just take a breather. <laughs> you know, like Mark, yeah, so Mark has had nine waves. Vasco's only had two. In any other sort of um, sort of scenario, a 14-point 14 14 heat total would be pretty solid in a final. You'd be happy with that. But unfortunately for the Portuguese surfer, he's up against the man on fire. And he's going to need two, a nine and an eight, just to get out of the position he's in. Doable, but difficult. You've been surprised to see how well Mark Caminho has gone in this event, Mundy? Um... I mean, he was he was high in the rankings. He'd had a pretty good year. He was, I think, sec third in the rankings. So, yeah, I, yeah, I've been following his progress. He's a European junior champion. We knew about his pedigree. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've actually been a bit surprised just at the level he's, he's gotten to. He's improved in the last six months. I haven't seen himself competitively in six months. And in that time, he just sends a, um, a change. And, he's yeah, he's he looks elite level for you sure. Have you ever seen him look this confident as well between his heats before and after? No. I've never seen him so together. He's got a real spring in his step, doesn't he? He just looks like he's a man on a mission. I think he's maybe knuckled down a little bit. I think, obviously, with App as his coach, they've they're in, they're found their groove together as well. And so the whole combination, just, you know, he's, he's only young as well. You forget these guys, they, they're always improving. Even mm -hmm. they're, they're still growing in some respects. So he's always improving. He's surfing, and he's um he's, he's such a, you know, a, a talent. And I think that talent's finally... Get show as his coach said, this is a real Marco Mino. This yeah. is what we see in free surfing. This is what that we know he's got. And I think it's the first real time in an event he's, he's shown exactly that. Yeah, you can see, even on the interviews, you could see that how confident he was. Because when you when you actually believe in yourself and you can you can show it on your surfing and showing on those interviews, and that just gets in your mind and you start building confidence every minute of your life. And it feels like Marco. Yeah, he's on a really good headspace right now, and that's really important as a competitor. Fourteen on the clock in this. At the moment, it's been really all Marco Mino. Let's go. Still with that combination to think about. Still got time though for a couple of ways. Fourteen minutes is plenty of time for Vasco to get himself couple of high eights, which is essentially what he needs. 17.23 or better is his requirement, I suppose, in some ways, in his own mind as well. He knows he just needs to go the bombs and he needs to unleash. He didn't have priority. That's why Marco Minio is able to take this wave. What's he going to do for us here? First turn, blows out the tail, gets the reverse, hangs on by his toes on the tail pad and gets it done. That's the kind of form he's in. That's a little look in at the panel. It just feels like everything he does is going to land. <laughs> That's how much confidence he just puts out there. Look at this. Yeah, he launched a really nice crumby lip. Fins first. Just keeps his back foot on. Tell you what, if he'd managed to get a couple more mm. steep calves in there, that wave could have potentially gone off into the excellent range as well. Just boom. Yeah, as you said, he's just looking like, even when he, he looked like he could fall down, he regathered. He's looking so confident. I mean, that's going to come in seven. out of 7.03. That's a second seven. Oh, that was a prior wave, actually. Oh, that's he's, what got, so he's, he's got a number. He's got three sevens he's already throwing away out in the back there. It looks like this is a solid wave for Vasco if he can scrape into it, and he can't. Maybe the one behind. He was just a little outside for that one. Vasco, meanwhile, <laughs> guess, guess what? Is going. Minho's going an 11th wave. Massive first turn. Look at that. Wow, unbelievable combo of turns there for Marco Mino. I mean, this is ridiculous. He just looks like he's having so oh much fun. God. And then he That's... goes in. <laughs> A little spin at the end. I... Unbelievable scenes. Marco Mino absolutely on fire. I think he, he himself, he, he, I, I, he looks like by the claims that it, these this is the best surfing he ever did on a competition. Look at that first really strong turn straight into an air reverse. <laughs> and then it's just the wave looked like it was not going to offer him anything more. He just can put up another mini air reverse here just to finish it off. And that, as you said, he was just having fun. Look at this. like that's He's thanking someone because he's surfing like that. 
and that, oh. that wave could have been Vasco's wave. Unfortunately, he was a little bit too deep. And Vasco actually came on the on the outside wave right before, right, right behind Marco. Just keeps on going. You can even see in that drone shot. This is the wave of Vasquez. He's had to do a few cutbacks. His first turn looked great from wide. Oh, that's oh. a big car. That's his trademark. But here again, just cutting back, and that's not what he needs to do. Or just the wave, you know, he needs to get up in that pocket, and there isn't one for him. And when you've got a man, a Marco Mignot, he's got an 8.8 .8 for that last wave, so that improves his score. Yeah, I the thought it might have gone higher than that. Vasco. He's done the run around. Maybe just to get the cheers of the crowd, that could be. Look at that. Just soaking it in. Looking at the coach. And... He's still got 10 minutes to improve on a heat total now. That's 17.8. How do you improve a nine and an 8.8? .8? That's, you, that's oh. the way he's surfing. You look, it, do, it does look like he's able to. So it's going to be fun and interesting to see. Go for a surf lesson and the European champ. <laughs> just just casually past, yeah. he's got trots past you, <laughs> looking great, <laughs> with a smile on his face, with a ridiculous total of 17.8 out so, of 20. He's so cool right now. He could probably just take that lesson, <laughs> teach 20 people how to surf, come in and still come still in, win. And still win yeah. the trophy. That's how comfortable he is. That's how comfortable he is in this position right now. <laughs> Just so many waves have all been pretty good. He's in rhythm with the, this bank. The, the conditions are absolutely tailor made for his oh, style of surfing. See Vasco starting to get a little bit frustrated. Every time he hears a score come in, it's just rain and eights and nines up, 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 upon him. Hard to, um, you know, get out of that when you just know you need two nines. The strategy is completely different to any normal sort of heat scenario. He's just got to regather and just hope, you know, he can get one big number, at least give himself a shot at it, you know. Yeah, right now he needs two nines, and we know he's capable of it, but he just needs to find that better waves, and it feels like Marco has been in sync with the ocean since the beginning of this heat, so it's going to be a tough one for Vasco, but still still 10, 10 minutes remaining. He has a combination of 17.8. That's That's got to hurt. Yeah, he needs a couple of bombs. Probably needs to have essentially priority twice, right? Well, he's got it now, but he'll need to get it back again if he were to get that nine, that number in the excellent range to find another one. He contrasts yeah, the approach to Marco's ridden 11 waves. And you, let's ask a question. Should Vasco have got more involved? Should he have started, when he started seeing those scores go up by sixth and seventh waves for Vasco, let's, sorry for Marco, let's stick with live action. Here goes Vasco Ribeiro with a ton of speed, goes to the air and just throws that one away under nine minutes now. Yeah, it feels like both of, uh, both of the some of the best waves of Marcos are outside of, uh, he did have priority. So it feels like you don't even have to, you don't even have to have priority to get some really good scores. And yeah, maybe Vasco should, because some of those waves were actually in Vasco's way and he could have gone on each one of them, but unfortunately uh, he didn't even look at them. So yeah, maybe he could have changed the strategy. He's been waiting for some, Really good ones. Unfortunately, he didn't find anything special, and it's all about Marcos. Pretty hard to change when you've probably set out your stall. Hang on, go out, going to wait for the biggest waves on this mm -hmm. bank. And that's that's the way he's, he he went into it. And uh, even when Marco was starting to pick off us, little insider ones, he stuck to his guns. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's easy in hindsight to say perhaps he should have come in and started rifling off, but I think it was more of a, just a rhythm thing. Every time yeah, Marco obviously. was, often it was when he was paddling back out. He was getting those yeah. waves. It's like sometimes you just have those um, surfs, those sort of heats where it's just all sort of everything you do Goes leads to away, another yeah. leads to another good exactly. decision. Yeah. One Portuguese. Well, we still a chance too, but we, yeah, we've got one Portuguese winner, one in the final. It's been great for the Portuguese fans and the surfing in general. Um, this is a country that just invests so much professional surfing and gives back so much. And um, although Vasco is just great that he's flying the flag, at least people come down to the event. It's just um, just in real safe hands, professional surfing in this country, courtesy of the uh, WSL in Europe and also obviously uh, Francisco Spinola and his Ocean Events team. And um, yeah, I just feel pretty confident they've got a pretty, pretty good um, pretty good handle on this this thing we love so much. Under seven minutes to go, having a pretty good handle really on the trophies. Marco Migno with a massive total. Let's check out the story of this one. This was Vasco early on having a crack. 
Yeah, it feels like he's ripping, obviously. So really good, but it feels like his waves didn't have that steep wall. And even though he's just putting a lot of look at this one, how you can even get so much water with absolutely nothing? Because the wave didn't allow him to go that big, and he still manages to just throw the fins. But this guy, look at this, the quality of his waves. Just perfect right-handers with a nice steep wall and clean wall on them just going ham on those turns it just feels like it doesn't stop and marco just really found his rhythm on this final it was absolutely smashing it yeah vasco tried to fight back just you see the waves just not of the standard he's surfing really well you can see the drive off the fins he's you know in rhythm you know, not making any mistakes, like surfing-wise, at all. It's just not quite as steep and not quite as a trick. It's these little bowly ones that Nick Nero is finding. Just in the pocket, getting vertical. And then going to the air, I think this could actually have been a higher score, I thought. But he's got some huge numbers. He's throwing away three sevens and an 8.23. The old days, you might remember, way back... This used to be four best four waves. Tell you what, if, you, if that was a counter right now, it yeah, was yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, like a 35 nine, point title. Yeah, nine points, 8.80. He, he, he threw away a score of 8.23, a seven, and seven, uh, seven, one, seven, and 6.2. So he could have gone for everything there, as we see Vasco. Maybe a bit of a steeper wall on this. Live action, Ribeiro charging down the line. Just engaging the rail, burying that surfboard underwater. Great aggression from him. This is the fight back that he needed and another big hit on the ends. So there he is. That's the kind of stuff we expected him. Mm -hmm. He's not had enough waves in this. That's his fifth wave. And he needs to get really active now. For these final four and a half minutes in this, let's get another look first of all. Yeah, he's back this first turn. Real shrapping, a tiny bit of a dig of a rail, but then he starts to find his mojo. See the spray this man provides off his board is incredible and a nice little finish. So, you know, as, as we've said, ripping, surfing well, he's just up against an opponent. We well, have to go an excellent every wave you get. I'm not sure this wave is an excellent one. Yeah, compare, I think that's got to be the Vasco's best wave, and as we see, Marco was right there because he, he actually, I think this is going to be Vasco's best wave. He, the thing is, here being overly critical, obviously, but the, the main difference between Vasco and, and Marco's right now is that beginning of that wave. Vasco is choosing to go for those carves, and, and Marco is just going down to the bottom and, and attacking that leap. And Vasco was actually able to, he might have been able to do that on a on that um on that wave so it's a big number it does go in the excellent range eight two seven for vasco ribeiro and he's out of combination with three and a half minutes looking for a nine five three and i tell you if we get some sets come in mm -hmm. he will be backing himself to get that score there's the spread from the panel so he's back in the heat now it's still a tall order but it's got significantly more achievable by virtue of the fact that he's halfway there, he needed two excellent scores, he's got one of them. The next one will need to be a bit better. He's going to need to go into the lip, as you said, rather than face turns. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, in terms of doing calves, he couldn't really do much more than that for an 8-2-7. Yeah, he's got himself back in the game, which is important. Yeah, he was absolutely, you know, he just, he, he dug really deep. He, he forced the issue on those calves. He knew mm -hmm. he needed a big score, and he's, he's delivered 8.27. He's strong. I mean, it's still a tall order, but at least it's a possibility. And we, you know, well, of course, up for grabs. Let's not forget, Paul, it's, you know, your body weight in Australia Galicia beer. So Vasquez won that before from memory. He's probably still getting through it. Um, Marco <laughs> Midday might European June champion. He's got some potential beer coming his way. His shout tonight. And Vasco now needing, well, a 10, a nine and a half point ride. He's praying something comes his way. He can expect fireworks experienced he's gnarly he hasn't given up either so let's hope we we might see a dramatic ending but he doesn't have priority and Mingo is right on his case you think Mingo right now is he nervous like does he does he, is he thinking like i know vasco can he's able to do a 9.5 in these conditions so should i just stay close and make sure i have the, the right calls or he just he doesn't really care what do you think paul 
Seems pretty confident in himself. I would say he would be back at himself at this situation. His opponent needs a 9-5-3. He's also got priority as well. So if a wave does come through, you'd be thinking, if anyone's getting a nine here, it's going to be me again in this final. I'd say probably that's where his head's at. Here's a little look at Vasco, and it will go here. So just taking that opportunity, has a little look out the back. What's he got for us here? He's got some speed. Goes the alley-oop, nearly lands it doesn't get it done. Vasco in the lineup now with priority with a minute and 15, looking for a 9-5-3. Needs a bomb. Yeah, he sold it well, because, uh, yeah, the wave had a, a bit of a uh, scoring potential, but maybe he felt the pressure right there, Vasco, with Vasco pedaling for that wave. With one minute, Vasco needed a bit of a bomb. <sighs> what yeah. do you think he's thinking right it was now? A good, it was a good decision. He had to go. He blocked him, took away any potential scoring opportunity mm -hmm. with one minute on the clock. And we'll see Vasco now, he's just have to move inside a bit because he doesn't see any sets out the back. He's sort of turning his back a little bit on the swells. There's not much coming his way. Fought hard, he surfed well. But unless something pretty special happens in the next 35 seconds, Marco Migno, the new European Junior Champion, is going to be the Caprica Surf Fest Champion as well and on the way to the Challenger Series in what's been one of the best final performances I can remember in a long time, Paulie Evans. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, both of these two great numbers. Look at Vasco's numbers. 15.4 is big, but he's just come up against Marco Mignot's just in sort of force of nature type levels. It's just everything he touches has turned to gold in this final. Be a last wave here for Vasco. He's looking for that excellent number. That won't be it. He knows it, so he'll just look to bring this in. But you know what? It gives a round of applause. So sometimes you just have to tip your hat and say, you know what, I came up against someone me, yeah. that just, I just couldn't even get close to what he was doing today. And it's all about this guy, Marco Migno. He's your champion of the Caparica Surf Fest. Marco Migno is the European champion. He's won the event here and he goes to the Challenger Series at Snapper Rocks on the Gold Coast of Australia next month with an absolute ton of confidence. He'll just want to bottle the sort of form he's shown in this final, Ben, and keep it for his first heat of snapper. Yeah, and he surfed that wave a lot. He said when he came in the booth a couple of days ago, he knows it well. You know, <laughs> just looking at how <laughs> Surfing <laughs> like this. The boys are on fire. Yeah, he suits the wave. His style is incredible. So, yeah, I, look, I'd back him to make a serious dent on, on the Challenger Series. Um, you know, in this form, and uh, with his mindset the way it is, yeah, he, you know, I mean, he's up against some incredible surfers, but he's got what it takes. Surfing like this, he will be definitely making some good hits at Snapper because it's a very similar wave to this. And you can see how spicy he is, how confident he is. If he puts that spiciness and confidence on the challenge. His claim series. game's been pretty good. He's yeah, probably, really good. you know, good. his claim game's King got that flames. on point. Yeah, he's got King that on flames. point, which is important. Shotgun, AK-47, three-pointers, yeah. God. He's what else is missing? Yeah. So now he comes in, his mates are stoked. Uh, there's Levy there, he's through. He says thanks, Jason will be super stoked. I'm really looking for <laughs> There he is. Look at him, that's uh, pure joy from the young man, Aaron Strong. They've been traveling and training together all week. He's, that's the other thing about it. He's come, you know, came in, I think, 10 days ago. He's, he's put in the time here. It's really important to do that. No, he has been here for a month. Oh, a whole month. Yeah. He's done a whole month. And yeah, that is real commitment. I'll tell you what, well, that, that's why he's getting chaired up the beach. As bad as happy as any human can be. got to feel good. European champion won the contest. He did both of it at the same, in the same contest. So he's got to be happy, that's for sure. And yeah. he's going to go to Australia with a lot of confidence. Yeah, I mean, obvious takeaways from this event. We've been real lucky with the way. So also in terms of performances on final stage, same with Mafalda Lopez. Like, it's not like, you know, you win an event, you're just all about getting it done, right? You're just getting the win and that. If you can get the performance to match as well, and throw in excellent numbers in a final, it doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes, you know, the energy can peak a little bit in the earlier rounds. Marco Mignot and Mafalda, both of them, have really put on an entertaining show. Also, Vesco Ribeiro get an excellent number himself in the final. He's looked great all week, and that's been another story from this event. He'll reflect back a little despite not to get the win, but Vasquez back. Oh, definitely. I think I think his headspace is a lot better. Uh, I think he's doing all right. I think he's happy again. He's gonna he's gonna be well with this 
We're gonna go to the Joanna These live brothers, for, just you know, to hear from the, the winner wait, of wait, last wait. of the final. <laughs> go for it, Joanna. Congratulations, Marco. 17.8 in the final. What else did you want? I mean, you know, surfing against Vasco, you never know. Like, yeah, I left him a wave, he did an eight point. Like, for me, Vasco is an inspiration since a really young age. Uh, I got with Quicksilver and he was there and he always supported me and gave me some tips. He's such a legend in Portugal and I'm really happy to share a heat with him. And what a beautiful week in Caparica and I'm really blessed uh, for a, such a good heat, you know. You caught 13 waves. Were you just having fun at some point? Because you got some really great scores. I mean, I was just going, I, for a moment I was like, is this even going to stop? My heart was beating fast. But uh, yeah, you know, this, this morning I woke up and I saw the little wedge. And I was wondering if we were going to surf it this morning. So I was prepared to surf that little wave. It makes me feel like at home, you know, Sayulita, little right-hander. So, uh, saludos a México también, a todos los Ayu boys. <laughs> well, you got two trophies to pick up there on the podium, so we'll see you there. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Marco. Thanks, Joanna. Well done. Joanna Garnell, as ever, on the spot, asking the good questions, getting the great answers. And Marco is super, super stoked. Shout out to his mates back home in, um, yes, yeah, Saluta, Mexico. Tell you what, you just compared Caprica to Superbank. Now he's compared it to the Mexican point breaks. I mean, you know, that's that shows you what a great week <laughs> waves we've had this week. And yeah, you know, really nice touch. First, first thing he said was, you know, shout out to Basco Ribeiro and um, you know how much he's helped him in his career. It wasn't that Chicago was back in the booth? Luke Jervis here. It's nice to hear that from a young guy thanking um, Basco for you know what he's done for the sport. Yeah, sometimes we forget that Basco has been uh, here for a long time. Uh, he's not a veteran because he's still pretty young, but he has been here for a long time and he has to be an inspiration for all these surfers. Vasco is European champion, he was uh, European junior champion, he was uh, world junior champion, he was national champion like five times. And so he has to be an inspiration for every surfer in the planet and especially for the Europeans and the, this new generation of kids. Uh, I think Vasco, you have to be happy with that. Obviously, he's not going to be happy he lost, but at the same time, he needs to be happy because he, he overcame same situ some situations with his mental health and he's back. He did the final and he's happy. Yeah, absolutely. And Shiko, mate, you're the hometown boy. You're from Caparica. What a town. What a, what a week of ways than you, in, your, in your hometown, mate. I know how to be biased, but this is the best <laughs> place in the world to have a comp. <laughs> Don't even and I say think this that. week was amazing. I wish I, I was in the comp too because the waves looked really yeah, fun true. to me. So... Yeah, um, well, when I watched you do 11 backhand reentries on one wave yesterday, <laughs> yes, I thought yeah. you, you could well be in the, on the Thank, grind, mate. Thanks, man. <laughs> You're making me emotional right now. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been, it has been brilliant. I'd like to thank the locals for, for taking us in and, uh, yeah, showing us that Caparican welcome. It's been amazing, the support we've had. So, uh, you know what, let's go through the week. <clears> We've had so many incredible waves. We've got a highlights packages that we're going to talk through. Starting off way back on, um, you know, it was Monday, I think we started. Good and morning, it's just been Bondia. pumping ever since. So it's let's go back. This feels like a, an eon ago. On the shores of Casa Caparica, Bass, Portugal. But, you know, there was such and good we waves. We've had offshores at all day. We've had QS sun and it's been pumping Jervis. Town. And we're looking at a big week you know, of like competition. From, from the start, every day, it's just been kind of, it's been on. Yeah, like the, this first day was probably the smallest day of the, of the, um, of the waiting period. But still, we had some really amazing waves and really good surfing. It just, and it just got better from there. Just every day, just in, the, the conditions improved, improved. Even today, which was kind of one of the smallest days, it was still really fun. This, Wedge right-hander was just pristine and some really fun conditions. Yeah, this goes up to yesterday. That was so many highlights. That was uh, in Costa, I think, early on in the event, spinning to win. We had some strong offshores, so that not a whole lot of aerial surfing early in the week. You can see the banks. You can see the people. You can see the, the swell that just kept Good pouring in. We've had Portugal. huge crowds uh, every single day. On the beautiful shores and, um, of the tell you what, it's, it's just kept, kept on delivering. All eyes on Caparica. So we've got some solid swell, didn't we, Chicago? Probably mid Thursday was like some people saying some of the best waves uh, of the year or of the, of the last few years on this stretch. It really was pumping. Yeah, it was. The, the sandbank was amazing out the back. Worked really good on the low tide, as we see here. Uh, Shim Nikritin 
uh, making sure he was delivering some huge turns off the back. And I think the boys had a lot of fun um, on those days. A lot of paddling, uh, a bit tiring, but uh, nonetheless, a lot of waves ridden. So that's why uh, that's what they want. And um, yep, uh, Costa delivering some amazing waves like this one. That. Barnaby Cox. That looked like backdoor. Yeah, <laughs> that was like backdoor, exactly. Spit, tube, full moon, sunsets. It's had it all. Um, and I'll tell you what, the main thing is, it's just, it's given the surfers the opportunity. You know, every heat, you know, there hasn't been a chance where either waves can come through or, yeah, or lulls. Yes. Even with four man heats, it's, you know, like it just came down to the surfing. Uh, uh, you know, and that's that's what you want in a surfing competition. Yeah, there were so many waves throughout every single heat. There were so many opportunities. Every surfer just could go and get some of the best waves of the heat if they wanted to, as this was probably the most, the cleanest day of all. Look at this. I've never seen a barrel like that in Costa de Caparica, Chic. Have you? I have, mate. <laughs> we get barreled over here. Um, <laughs> Normally, when it's barreling you, it's barreling everywhere in, else in more places, like you, Sarah, for example. But yeah, we get barreled a lot. Um, not gonna tell all the secrets as we see <laughs> the highlights package of the woman here uh, was an emotional moment for us, Ben. We were uh, both in the booth watching uh, Yolanda Hopkins uh, crowning um, her European champion trophy, and this was about that beautiful morning with. Uh, light offshore winds and Joanne Duru showing us how you should surf on your backside. Yeah, Joanne qualified. Tristan Gilbo there. He had a good run to the quarterfinals as well. Um, yeah, Joanne now off to the Challenger Series event. So he did his work. And then Vasco, Kikash, they surfed together, the two really close. A few Portuguese icons. It was a bit of a shame they drew each other in the in the heat. And unfortunately for, for Kikash, he couldn't get through. But that was the start of Vasco pretty much laying down the marker for the rest of the event. Yeah, that was the first time we actually saw Vasquez just going ham and uh, this girl, <laughs> she was on fire throughout. Both of these girls, look at that, that's one 9.9, that was a 9.7 by Kike, one of the biggest turns of the event. Yeah, the girls had been on a tear as well, so there's so many good waves from both ca categories. Uh, the boys were smashing, the girls were smashing, as you can see here. Uh, both of them, it's like, he has been really, really good. This guy was on an absolute tear as well, and fortunately for him, he just went a little short against one of the most informed surfers. Yeah. The winner, obviously. Yeah, exactly, and Teva, that was so close. <laughs> Look at that aerial stuff that Marco, that was yesterday, I mean. That's the type of surfing he's been doing all week. So confident, and, um, you know, we'll go through in the post show, we'll go through the various permutations of the rankings, and because we know exactly what's happening now and we'll go for those for the fine tooth comb but um basco didn't win but i tell you what he's, he showed everyone that he's back and he means business and, uh we'll see what he can do for furcher that was uh kick us for selco she was really really good and there's hopkins she got the semi-finals just pulling a dough just came in a bit um close there for her but it's been absolute incredible week of waves Still pumping, still sun is shining. Easter weekend at its very best in Portugal. And there's been something for absolutely everybody. You know, just no shortage of, of high octane surfing. Of, uh, you know, gr great narratives. There's been the Challenger Series qualifications. A lot to unpack. Uh, we're just getting ready for the, um, yeah, the presentation down there. We see Paul Evans take control, Master of Ceremonies. But, um, it's uh, it's all come together, you know. What about you, Philippe? And and, and what's mate? What, if you could put a highlight, it's a single thing that stands out for you over the course of the week, watching those highlights, or what's something that really stands out, or something you'll take home with uh, you? I'll say consistency of the waves, and yeah, two of the best surfers in the contest throughout, from the day one to the last day. They won actually, because Marco and Mafalda were standouts every single day of the contest. So, it's deserved. Uh, Costa de Caparica just provides some of the most funnest waves I've ever seen here, and uh, it has been a really good contest. Mm -hmm. He's Chica? still in shock, eh? Yeah. He's really in shock with yeah. the, the waves he yeah, saw. I've been right. coming here since I was ten, uh, 14 years old. So Yeah, you yeah. come once a year. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no, we had contests here for a long time. What's, and your, <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's your highlight? 
My one? Yeah. <laughs> Watching Philippe sing <laughs> Cost of the Cabrigas Good Ways. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure the highlight. And it's on record. It's on tape. It uh, is. Yeah. yeah, exactly. No, it's delivered. And um, we've had awesome times. I mean, it's so much fun too. We've had some nice dinners, haven't we? Some yeah. free surfing. Um, it's been an epic kind of week. <laughs> so, um, yeah, really, really stoked on all of that. Um, I can't wait to see those um, you know, down in the presentation with Marco uh, and also Mafalda. First win for Mafalda in her, in her QS career. That's, you know, that's, that's important. She's sort of been knocking on the door for a while, but it feels like she's now just gone right. I'm, you know, I can do this and she's reached a, a new level, huh, Philippe? Yeah, uh, yeah, obviously the win is super important, but the way she surfed on that final for me was the most important, the most impressive because uh, she, I, I watch her surf pretty much every day and I know that she's able to do stuff like that, but on, on, a, on a hit, on a final, that just puts you on a different level because nice. she absolutely smashed it. Yeah, well, she's down on the podium, as is Paul Evans. I'll, I'll leave it with you, Paul. It's all yours. Welcome, everybody. It's great to see all these happy faces, bright sunshine, pumping waves. It's been an incredible week here in Caparica. Welcome to the prize giving. Uh, as is our tradition, our first round of applause goes out to all you guys, the fans here. Incredible support throughout the week. Give yourselves a round of applause. You've been brilliant as ever. And as I mentioned, yeah, we've had really good waves all week here. We've been blessed with big swell, blue skies. It's been like a real party atmosphere down on the beach every day been a really enjoyable one and obviously finals day didn't disappoint for our presentation let's invite to come onto the stage from Almada Felipe Pacheco you'd like to come up on stage Almada of course supporting surfing in a big way here and one of the highlights on the calendar is coming for this event special thanks to our other event partners City of Almada Visit Portugal Estrella Galicia Mayo Millennium Bank Hertz and Cabaret Water, and once again, a special thanks to the local community for lending us their surf spot. Big round of applause for our sponsors, please. Well, coming into final stay with still good waves out there. We only had a couple of heats to run today. We were able to pick the best moment of conditions in terms of the tide, and the finals didn't let us down. So we'd like to invite, first of all, to the stage, a woman who's had amazing results in the past in Portugal. She's had success in all sorts of venues. She, she was runner-up today. A huge round of applause for Pauli Nado. Pauline, well done. Obviously, you're stoked to make a final. You would love to go all the way to a win, but you've finished your season really strong. Yes, I'm happy to make another final here. Obviously, I wanted to get the win, but uh, Mafalda has been ripping. Congrats. Uh, amazing surfing. Um, yeah, stuck to be here every year. I love this place, so happy overall. And excited to be heading to Australia for the challenges? Yes, super excited to uh, surf snapper with only three girls out for sure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Pauli Nado. Okay, next person I'm going to invite up is someone who's been creating a buzz all week here. Many with his surfing, he's been putting in incredible performances. It's great to see him back in the kind of form we've come to expect and love from him. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. Vasco Ribeiro. Mate, Mate. Vasco's back. Yeah, I'm, I'm back. I'm, good. I'm back and I'm feeling good. Can I talk in Portuguese? Um, Antes de mais, queria agradecer a todos por estarem aqui hoje. É ótimo voltar às finais e voltar a sentir-me bem. Tem sido um longo processo, mas, mas é bom estar de volta. Obrigado a todos. Great job, Vasco. Well, speaking of someone that's been throwing down massive performances and massive scores all week here, just the power, the speed, everything about a surfing has been absolutely on point. And that's one thing doing that through the rounds, but to come and do it in the final and get excellent numbers. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for your women's champion, Mafalda Lopes. Fowler, just a quick word with you. 
How good does it feel to be up here? You make the final, you make the final once before here. How good does it feel to get the wind? And tell us about your connection with this place. Uh, it's a, such a spe special place for, for me. It's where I learned to surf. All my friends and everyone is from here. So it's, it's, I'm speechless, honestly. It feels so good. My family is here to support me, my friends, my coach. So I just want to thank everyone and I'm glad the, the prize stays here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your women's champion, Mafalda Lopes. Brings us on to our last trophy. Someone who has been a lecture final all week, haven't really been able to take your eyes off him in terms of his performances out in the water. And once again, in terms of the final, to come and do that and to surf like that, he was throwing away scores that most surfers in most heats would love to have. Make some noise for your event champion, for the men, Marco Migno. Marco, buddy, how does it feel just to, A, to get the win, but to put in a performance like that, you just look like you're enjoying yourself out there. I mean, it was amazing to share a final with Vasco. He's always been a big inspiration for me since a young kid. Um, so amazing to share a final with the king of Portugal. So yeah, um, it's been an amazing week in uh, Caparica, beautiful weather, good waves. So I want to thank the Portugal crowd for uh, being amazing and to all those beautiful girls too. <laughs> uh, so, uh, um, and one thing I want to say is a big shout out to uh, Jason for being in my corner. Much respect, brother. And uh, Mario for training me for this event. Uh, so, it's just up from here, you know. It's, uh, it's another day, another blessing. Okay, well, Marco, I hope you've got a bit of room in your bags because it's not the only trophy you're going to be walking away. Obviously, you're an event champ of the Caparica Surface, but you're also the European regional champ on the QS. So massive congratulations, a brilliant season. Marco Migno is the champion of Europe. All right, once again, let's make some noise for our finalists. A huge round of applause, ladies and gents. Just the last thing we've got to do, as is traditional. You guys like refreshment? You like beer? Maybe you know someone that does? You're going to win your weight in beer. So, Mark, I'm going to ask you to step on the scales. Keep hold of the trophies if you want, mate. That's allowed. Yeah, I've seen that done before. And so Manuel Eroa is going to award Marco with a beer token, which is always nice. He got some trophies, got a bit of cash, got some beer. We're partying tonight. Woo -hoo! And Mafalda as well, if you let me hold your board. Yeah, keep your trophies. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, go for, go it. for it. All right, so loads of beer coming to Mafalda Lopes as well. Thanks to Manuel Eroa and Australia Galicia. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause. Let's send it back to the studio. Yeah, thanks, thanks Paulie. I'll tell you what, there's the one thing that Paul Evans likes to do, it's, like to, it's, like, it's weigh people on stage. <laughs> He's the master at it. He's done it many times over the last few years. Straight Galicia, huge supporters of this event. We thank them for all their ongoing support. Oh, and of course, also for the uh, cold lagers that um, we, we do have the odd little frequent after the event. So, yeah, great effort from there. Great to see those... Um, guys and girls on stage getting their um, their emotion. I tell you what, Marco, he's all class, isn't he? Shout out to the the, the pretty young ladies <laughs> of the beach. F offered free beer to the crowd just then tonight. We party, so yeah, he's a real classic guy. Really, um, you, you know, he's enjoying his, his experience, isn't he? He's a winner, but he's, he's he's having fun with it. Yeah, you should. 
you should have fun. You, you should uh, take advantage of that win and being European champion. Obviously, has a, he has a, a very important, very important contest in a in a in a, in a few in a few months next month maybe. Yeah, but weeks. yeah, he can have fun tonight. He just yeah, he loves to have a little bit of fun. We all know that. <laughs> yeah, and so speaking of having fun, we're going to have a look at the Mafalda Lopes. She was the winner. As you said, she was big shout out to all the friends and family in Caparica. Going to have a look how she got to the final. Her road to the final was started down three or four days ago. And I'll tell you what, Chico, I can't remember a, a heat where she was in any type of strife. She sort of dominated every every heat she's been in. Yeah, I think she's been really consistent uh, throughout the whole week. Uh, the recipe was always the same. Hit it hard, don't fall. And I think she did a good job on it. Uh, I think she has been uh, on point with the, her wave choice uh, overall. And uh, the way uh, she's been surfing, I think, uh, changed a bit. She's a bit more aggressive, a bit more patient down the line. And that showed uh, in, this, um, in this comp. Uh, she looks really, really composed. So I think uh, this was just a question of time until my father lobs. I think no one, was no one was throwing this amount of spray with her fleet. That, that's the difference between her and the rest of the competitors. She was just throwing buckets of spray. Yeah, that, that's no one. Maybe maybe Kika, Kika surfs with a lot of power as well. But uh, Mafalda, look at this. She just attacks the leap. It just puts the, the board so vertical and with a lot of power. So it's it's pretty interesting. For me, the most impressive surfing she did the whole week was this. Fi the final was absolutely insane. This this. Two turn combination. She was attacking vertically and just pushing the, the board, and it was loose at the same time. It's not just step on the back foot. You can see she has that transition. It's really strong on her legs. A lot of power, and it's really impressive. I, I'm, I'm very happy for her. Very, very happy. <laughs> so, look how happy she is. She's not as, not as happy as she is. She's so stoked. It means a lot to this community. She absolutely smashed it. Massive totals from both finals, actually. And you can see what it means to her. The coach there, first on hand, all the mates from the local town. And it's a huge, huge win. And uh, yeah, well deserved. A great performance from a great surfer. And she's got her first qualifying series win. And I'd hazard a guess that it won't be a last uh, throughout her career because she's just getting on a roll, just starting off, mm -hmm. and we expect more from her next year, hopefully pushing up to that Challenger Series where I think her surfing belongs. So that was uh, an impressive ride to the final, as was the other sort of side of the draw, the men's, and Marco Mignot. He, you know, similar in many ways, Chico, in that I can't remember a heat where he was under the pump or he needed a score. He was just... He, he sort of dominated from the, from the very start of all these heats. Yeah, he meant, he meant business uh, all every since the start. Uh, he had a lot of rhythm, um, and you could tell he was really in sync with the ocean. I think that has to do to, with the fact that he spent like a year, uh, not a year, but a, a whole month year training and getting um, in connection with the ocean. And I think uh, that's really important. We've seen uh, on the IS level that you need to spend some time on the place that you're going to go compete, and uh, that shows. Uh, here he felt uh, really good, almost at home, because he had that feeling, home feeling of spending so much time in one place. Uh, his routine was uh, settled here. He had a Portuguese uh, um, physical, coach, yeah. physical coach as well. So I think that all those factors uh, help him to feel better and perform better. So um, he, he got everything dialed in, and uh, you could feel it in the water that uh, it was really. Uh, he really had a good connection already before the comp started with the uh, Costa. Yeah, and this final, you know, we th I think he had three sevens and an eight. He didn't, he didn't count. Yeah, that was his turn. Yeah, that's what he was doing pretty much. That worked out. Yeah, that worked out for him. Just he minute. landed that one. Yeah, <laughs> the, visual <laughs> the visualization of this. Look at this. He just got some of the best waves I've ever seen in Costa de Caparica. Just those peeling right-handers with a lot of walls. Just. It was it was very hard to beat on these conditions. Very yeah, hard. Absolutely. The conditions too, they just got the perfect tide for this final. Mm -hmm. Hugo Pinheiro, we said it before, but yeah, absolutely rinsed it in terms of when we served and Marco just made the maze to those real steep sections. Vasco couldn't get those steep sections. And every time Marco stood to his feet, the crowd went, Well, there's his coach. He's been absolutely on fire all week as well, Appers. And then that was a really nice touch seeing Vasco, you know, um, we just saw how Marco thanked Vasco for all his help and you know it was a really nice touch seeing those two. A bit of a 
potential changing of the guard, the new European Junior Champion. And uh, yeah, absolutely deserved. He's been incredible throughout the whole week. And uh, yeah, that's great to see. So right now though, we're looking out amongst the waves. It's gonna be a field of waves out there. Hopefully for us guys to get a bit of a surf in after this. Now I'm all inspired by these guys. Pretty pumped for some more action. We will actually just go through the, some of the rankings and see how um, it, it, it turned out in terms of the, the Challenger series was um, up for grabs. This was the last event of the qualifying series. So we'll go, we'll go through those and, and see who's what. There's some probably um, people, and the surfers especially, waiting on beta breath to see if they got in or not. So that's to come. And um, right now we'll see the rankings. So this is the final rankings as it turned out. This is how they went into the event. Mm. So this is where they started off. You see Marco there down in fifth. Um, you know, he was a bit of a long shot, really, to get up to the, um, to, you know, all the way up to first, but he just slowly went through the ranks. Kuzane got locked out early. Karik was a pretty early um, as spot. Well, yeah. He's got lost, and then Joe Andrew did enough to, to maintain his second spot. Kali Vast dropped down a couple, but did enough. So, yeah, Marco just went through some, um, yeah, five spots, jumped into first, and uh, cemented his qualifying series spot. Right now, we're down there. On the wave, of, we're going to go through the wave of the day. You can see it's another great little activation where the winners plant a tree in Costa Capri that'll be there forever, uh, giving back to, uh, to to the town. But this is the Australia Galicia wave of the day. Uh, we've had some pretty good waves today, but this one, well, no surprise. It comes from Mafalda Lopes, an 8.83, and in the final, no less. We saw it before, but it, let's see it again. Jarvis, she was absolutely on fire. Yeah, this two-turn combo, it's just so, so, that's perfect surfing. She went to the bottom, went to the bottom, straight into the lip, bottom, straight into the lip, and this guy, pretty much the same. Bottom, top to bottom surfing, as you see here, just putting a lot of pressure on her in of each of it that uh, of each uh, maneuvers, and she uh, he absolutely smashed it. Both of them did, and Marco, nine points. He could have gone higher, he could have gone... Because, yeah, there's so many, he did so many good waves, it's almost hard to pick one out. Yeah, well, that's it, though. That's the Australia Galicia way of the day to go with the beer. He's already won. Incredible surfing. Um, yeah, that's a wrap, guys. We've done the European series for another year. Luckily, another one happens next year as well, so we're going to start off straight away. But um, I'd like to thank you two for your hard work, Thanks. your fine company, your exemplary surfing skills, your expertise, and just your friendship, guys. Oh, thanks, 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 thanks for having so us sweet. in Caparica. That's so sweet. You made yeah. us feel welcome, and um, yeah, Paul I really not appreciate here, it. Yeah. Paul Evans, <laughs> you know, look, I can take him or leave him. I, I, I'm <laughs> going to take you guys if I could. If it was one person, I would keep. It would be you two. Uh, um, we're going to wrap it up. Um, you know, don't forget WSL app for more surfing action. The Bell's Beach is going to come our way soon. But thanks for your support. That's a wrap for this particular event and for the series. Don't go anywhere, folks. We're going to come back to Caparica next year. See you soon. Good morning and welcome to Portugal. It's just on. Here she goes, up riding on the backhand. We'll pick it up from above. First turn, sharp. Get some speed. Deep bottom turn, bang. Wow. Nice and vert. And then... Herself to do it. Here she goes with loads of speed. Here, a bit of a faster wave. She puts it really strong on that one. Straight into the air. Did it land it? You just wait, and as soon as. Some of the best turns off the contest. Look at that, yeah, the combination of the backside turns, it's really fun. And this is Pauline, second to best wave, 6.5. Again, nasty ball on that one, strong it. Straight into another one, right at Pauline's face. Fact, they are just clapping in the view. All right, Pauline, for that win. Can you think about all the hard work that goes in as well, and all the training? Gaining speed down the line in this occasion. But this guy, look at this, the quality of his waves, just Perfect right-handers with a nice steep wall and clean wall. You know, it's finding just in the pocket, getting vertical. And then going to the air, this could actually have been a high score, I thought. But he's got some huge numbers. He's throwing all
always. Three sevens and an 8.23. The old days, you might remember way back. You said it used to be four best four waves. There were a few. That was a kind of right now. It was it, both it, 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 champion won the contest. He did both of it at the same, at the same contest. So he's got to be happy, that's for sure. And he's going to go to Australia with a lot of confidence. Yeah, I mean, obvious takeaways from this event. We've been real lucky with the way, so... This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.